do 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 Hey everyone, I'm Cosmic and welcome to the cloud. We are doing the normal Splatoon 3 stuff today. Um, also, it's Cali Day, which is like an art thing on Twitter. Um, <laughs> I didn't know what else to title the stream. It's not particularly relevant to what we're doing today, but it is a thing. Uh, there we go. Okay. Hello, Chloe Elizabeth Price. What team? Uh, I chose Team Bear. I don't particularly care about the theme this Splatfest, but um, I am I am on Team Bear, which I don't know. Some of my friends were Bear. Um, I don't have strong opinions about any of them, and I thought it would be kind of funny as like the number one Grizz hater to be on Team Bear. So <laughs> that's what I went with. Um, but yeah. So I chose one just so I can get conchells, basically. Hello, Kimo. Hello, Denise. Hope you guys are doing good. Um, I might just start off with some series today. I don't know. I feel like there's been things going on. There was like all the side order stuff, then there was Splatoon wind shine down, and now we're just back to kind of like a normal day. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I don't even know what I want to play. I've been trying to get back into Stamper lately. Well, let's see what the maps are. Um, sure, we'll we'll try we'll try some Stamper to start off. I still don't have five stars on this. <laughs> I made a video like, geez, was it like even a year? It wouldn't have been a year ago at this point. No. Um. But I made some Stamper videos when I started playing it. I made one called, like, I want to be a five-star Stamper, and it's literally been, like, months. <laughs> I kind of, the weapon got nerfed a bunch, and then I kind of stopped playing it, so... Um... It has been a while. No one's on S2? I mean... Yeah. That's not too surprising to me. I, I know it's still, like, a little bit active, but... You know. Especially with Pretendo being a thing right now and Splatoon 1 getting all the hype. Plus Splatoon 3 Worlds going on, like... There, there are reasons to be playing Splatoon 1 and 3 right now, not many reasons to be playing 2, but... <laughs> I don't know. I, I've gone back to Splatoon 2 a couple of times and it mostly has not felt very good. <laughs> I, I'm not a big fan, like, it's just the specials and just the aiming, like, I, I don't know. Splatoon 2 just feels a lot worse to play than... One or three to me. Um, the single players are good, but I don't know. I would need I would need a good reason to go back to Splatoon 2 multiplayer. <coughs> oh, I could have streamed Mario RPG today. Honestly, I feel like it's kind of too late now. <laughs> I kind of want to play Splatoon, but yeah, sorry that that has been taking forever. Um, I've been meaning to finish that. Uh. I don't know. I don't know when the next one will be. Maybe if I remember next week. I don't really- I like, I'm gonna be pretty busy with school stuff this week, so, uh... I probably won't be able to stream again until the weekend, but... Hopefully I remember. <laughs> maybe- maybe I can set, like, a thing. Um... Yeah, that would not have been a bad thing to do today. Although, I don't wanna... I kinda wanna do, like, one more Mario RPG stream, cause I think- I don't know- I, I think I have about, like, four-ish hours left in the game, maybe? So I'm thinking I can kind of just, um, you know, kind of push through and just get that done. Um, and I'd like today to be, I'd like to actually cut it off at three hours, because I sort of want to do some other stuff. Oh god. Including making a drawing for Cali Day, which I was working on yesterday. I actually, I like, I just wanted to draw something, I guess I wanted to draw something for Springfest. So I was drawing Cali, and then I was like, oh right, it's Cali Day. So I should probably... I mean, obviously no, no actual obligation, but it would be nice if I could finish that. That was a weird Zipcaster that somehow kind of worked a little bit. Um, but yeah, I would like to work on that later, so I don't stream... Oh! <laughs> I don't want stream to go on for a very long time. That was a weird ending where the guy actually got the tower, but it was too late.
Um, it's Cali Day because it's. Well, I think it. The first one was Marie Day because it's like. I can type in in chat. So, so Mario Day, if you know, is March 10th because the date is written like M A R 10. And then people were like, oh, that means we can do like Marie Day because because it's like there's a 13. So then I think the idea with Cali Day is that it's. Because there's because it's it's just the next month and there's a 13. <laughs> so it's like. Cal, I, I, yeah, like Cal E, I don't know, which doesn't work as well because obviously it's not March, but I think that's the idea. <laughs> and then people do Marina Day as March 1st because it's like Mar Marina. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's mostly just a Twitter thing as far as I'm aware. Um, but people just draw fan art of the characters. Do, 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 do. I forget. I think people have tried to make like deep cut days too, but I have not. I think it's harder to come up with a consensus for those ones. <laughs> I'm not sure what the what the plan was there because it just it's just like a community thing. It's not like official, obviously. September third. That could almost work. Uh, I feel like there was a Pearl Day. I forget, I forget what Pearl Day was. I don't know. You can probably, like, just look it up and see if people have posted things. I'm on Team Bear Bear Cub, I guess, is what it is officially. I've just been saying bear. Um, but yeah. I don't I don't have strong thoughts about this, this theme. I mostly just went on it because my friends were on it. Do, do, do. Um. I did not have ink for a burst bomb. Oh my god, I did not see that there was a guy there. Yeah, it's FNAF Splatfest. I don't know. I, I like the idols having outfits, and I like there being unique theming for spring and stuff, but like the actual theme is like I I'm not really an animal guy <laughs> I don't know if, if it's not a dog or a cat I don't particularly care so I do not have strong feelings either way oh my god what I just get three people with one hold on what <laughs> I just got three people with a single charge slash I mean, it was on the tower, so I guess it's not anything crazy. They were just... I... Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Why is this... Why does this keep working? <laughs> they keep climbing the tower and I'm just stabbing them. Okay. This is an interesting game so far. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, how about... Why did that work? Why did the... Dude. <laughs> I'm in series right now. Like this is S plus. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't know why that kept working for so long. Maybe. Maybe Stamper is fun. Maybe I should get back on Stamper again. <laughs> do 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 do. Oh hello. Um. Okay. And then I just fumbled that, which probably should have been an easy kill. He teams up with Grizz. I, I know you're you're joking, but <laughs> for the record, I I hope Grizz is dead. I think Grizz is dead. Oh my god. I really do not want Grizz to be a recurring character. Oh my god. Yeah, Bluefin's always had the tall tower, even in Splatoon One. I don't really know. <laughs> What makes them decide what size tower to give the maps? Because it always feels a little arbitrary. Well, I guess on this map you have this, like, tall wall area, so it's like... 
Okay, again, I don't know why that keeps working. I mean, I died that time. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there it gives you maybe a bit more even, you know, height, so you can pressure that part a little bit easier. Oh my god, I'm dead. Um, but for the rest of the map, it just feels kind of random. I, I don't want Tartar back. I, I mean... I don't know. I, I... It would be interesting if we got like a... Um... Like more of a sympathetic villain in Splatoon. Which like, I mean Octavio... Arguably is, but... He's not treated that way by the characters. Like we do always just fight the antagonist in Splatoon. So I mean if there was ever a character where... You know... Like we reason with them or somehow like, you know... There's like a, a larger threat or whatever, like... They could have a way where there's reoccurring villains and it works, but based off the characters we currently have, I would I would much rather just get a new villain for every story. Oh my god. I don't know, I don't really feel like... Not really sure what the appeal of a, a recurring villain is. <laughs> like, I'm trying to think of, like, obviously they're very much a thing in lots of fiction, but I feel like most stories that take themselves seriously, like... I don't, like, I don't really get why even, like, Ganondorf shows up in Zelda all the time. I feel like those games would be better off if they just had <laughs> different characters. Oh god. It works for, like, Bowser, but that's, like... You know, it's kind of a different thing. Well, Smallisk is a... yeah. I don't... I don't know... Honestly, I'm still confused, like, if Smallisk was Order. <laughs> like, I, I kind of don't really get that. Um, also, we're actually losing this game. I got a ton of kills, but we did not actually push the tower. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like... Smallisk is a weird case, because I, I feel like it's just kind of... I don't want to say it's like a bad villain. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't really like it. Like, it doesn't really make sense. <laughs> you know, if there's some level of just like video game logic going on with the fact that you can fight someone in a simulation and then they can lose power. <laughs> you know, like how do we actually take away Order's power? Like why does shooting them with a virtual gun defeat them? That doesn't actually make any sense. <laughs> so... I don't think Order was particularly... I mean, there's the angle of, like, the Octarian Engineers are sympathetic, but they didn't even try to be villains. I'm just sorry, I'm, I'm like, thinking about it now. So it's like, <laughs> I mean, Side Order is more of a... It's not really, like, a man versus man story at all. It's kind of just, like, the AI is almost just like a... I don't want to say force of nature, because it's AI, it's not nature, but it's like, it's not a, it's not really a person. So I wouldn't call it sympathetic, it's just like, it's something the characters overcome, but it's not a person they like, kill. If that makes sense. <laughs> I don't know. Uh... Big Man? I don't... I don't think Evil Big Man is happening. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Hey, Uno. Or Powie, or whatever. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said Uno. I, <laughs> my brain... You, you're, you have three different names, so sometimes my brain corrects to a different one, and I don't know which one to say, but hello. <laughs> a Twilight Princess had a... I, I liked Twilight Princess's story. Um, I mean, I, I liked Midna's arc. I think it's its version of Ganondorf is definitely weaker than like Wind Waker's. Um, I liked it more in Tears of the Kingdom story easily, so <laughs> for whatever that's worth. But that's kind of a low bar. <laughs> Three. I mean, don't. Well, I don't know. I don't know what PR PRD. I don't know how to say that. So I I like I'm like okay. I guess Powie, and then for some reason I said Uno this time. I don't know. Man versus machine? Is that is that like an archetype? I, I don't know. 
I know that's like a thing. Oh god. I guess that makes sense. I mean, it's like Marina versus her own creation. Those are just your initials? Oh. I mean, I can also just remember who you are, but if you want to change it, go ahead. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where they go next with Splatoon story in general, like. I've kind of spoken a lot about what I want to see. Well, I've spoken about like the protagonist I want to see or how I want them to handle that in the future, but I don't I don't really know what the next villain would be. I don't know why I even tried that. Um, yeah, pretty much just conch shell day. What do you think of the next Nintendo console? I think that there were a bunch of rumors and then there stopped being rumors because they were wrong or the console got pushed back. So I'll just wait for Nintendo to actually say something, I guess. I don't know. There's not really much to talk about at the moment. That was not exactly a good Zipcaster, but maybe you had dis distracted them a little bit. Ooh, nope. Just hoping I could get the burst combo and I just missed entirely. That's cool. Well, we won the game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the only hope I have for an antagonist is that they would be not even necessarily a sympathetic villain, but at least a sentient villain, like a, a villain that can talk to us on like equal footing. <laughs> I don't know. Because it is like, I, I don't know how far they're willing to go with it. Because there's obviously, you know... They're willing to tackle heavy ideas with Splatoon, but I feel like they always have to kind of... Code it in some kind of goofy video gamey thing. Like Octavio's backstory is really interesting, but then Octavio himself is like super like goofy. And like, on the surface it doesn't, you know, you don't assume that he has this like... <laughs> interesting backstory. Um... Tartar is like the most serious they ever got, but then e even then, like Tartar's final design is like kind of goofy. I mean, when you realize that the green goo oozing out of the telephone is actually just like the blended gore of his victims, it seems dark. <laughs> but on, again, on a surface level appearance, he doesn't exactly look like a super serious villain. Obviously, the Nil statue kind of does, but um. I don't know. I, I mean, I just want to balance expectations with what they're actually going to do. So, like, having an actual antagonist who's just a person, like, as much as I want that, I don't know. I, I feel like they always want to do some kind of weird other thing. Yeah, I mean, Marina was super cool. Yeah, I mean, as cool as Parallel Canon is, and as much as I wish we, you know, there was more lore to, the, uh, to it, I just, I kind of don't think there is. <laughs> I don't think it's as, as important as people want it to be. I think it was just, you know, order, because Agent 4 was supposed to be, like, the security for the members, so order just, like, you know, had that set in, in its, like, data, like, oh, Agent 4 is a strong inkling, so they made a version of it, and it was Parallel Cannon. Like, I, I just think that's what it is. <laughs> I don't really know if there's any more to it. What are the best duelies? Um... I don't know at, like, a competitive level. Oh, DC. Um... I like the Dowser duelies a lot. I don't think they're particularly meta. Custom dually sculptures are good in Turf War, apparently, which I learned from watching, um... Oh yeah, so worlds are going on. I guess that's something to talk about. <laughs> um, Splatoon World Championship. Unfortunately, it's in Japan, and it's happening at like 4 a.m. Or like, at least the final, the final set is happening at like 4 a.m. So I probably won't be staying up to watch it, but... Um, coping for some kind of announcement. <laughs> A lot of people are, you know, talking about content extension and everything. I, I don't know. I, I hope something gets revealed, but... 
probably better to have expectations low. I don't know. Um, no, I, I don't think Agent 4 is in Parallel Cannon. I think Parallel Cannon's like a clone of them. I'm pretty sure that's the implication. I don't think Agent 4 was in the members... Well, they... I guess their palette was? They were only in the members to the same extent that all the other characters were. As in, like, Order pulled in their brains, but then by defeating Order, we saved them. So I think Agent 4 is, like, fine. Well, it's, yeah, it's like... Well, only one... Only the one parallel canon actually looks like Agent 4, though. The rest are just, like, generic Inklings. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, you actually named yourself Howie. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah, the fact that the winner gets a splash tag of their team is, like, really, really cool. That's actually, like, a super cool reward. I hope it's a thing that, like, anyone can get. Like, obviously, it would be cool if it was, like, a unique reward that only they could flex, but I feel like letting anyone in the game, like, you know, use their Inklings as a splash tag, like, that'd just be a cool legacy to have. Um, but yeah, that's that's actually super cool. What is my favorite Splatoon? Um, I mean, it's between one or three, I guess. I don't know, because I mean, I like... Octo Expansion is a thing in two. So, it's kind of hard to say. There are aspects of all of them I like. The winners could create their own weapon kit. I mean, <laughs> I think weapon kits, anything with game balance should definitely be left in the hands of the developers, I think. Because they're just going to say, like, add, like, slosh or burst bomb to the game and just, like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I think that'd be a bad idea. It should definitely, like, customization stuff is cool, though. Yeah, I hope, I don't know, like. It's a weird situation because... Worlds got postponed because they got, like, threats, um, from someone. So it was supposed to happen in, like, January. So I think it's pretty likely that the side order release date reveal thing that was just shadow dropped <laughs> was probably supposed to be the reveal for Worlds. So unless it was, like, that and, like, a content extension, um... That, almost, that kind of makes me less hopeful that there's going to be a meaningful thing, but I, I don't know. I mean, obviously some time has passed since then. I don't know. Um, right. That open is not good. Um, <laughs> Probably just going to stick with series for now. Do, 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 do. I swear I keep hearing Splatak play in the thing, like, ever since Splatoon 1 went down. Which probably is not intentional, but... Interesting. There's side order stickers? Is it, like, unique art, or is it just the, the renders and stuff? I mean, I think the thing with custom kits that would <laughs> satisfy a lot of people is just if they were available in private battles. Like, I feel like the custom kits debate is always like, is the entire game custom kits or are we, you know, just stuck with the kit system? And it's like, if they just let us customize private battles, I, I think the easiest way to breathe new life into Splatoon, let us choose from all of the challenges that have ever happened and play them in private battles and let us customize kits in private battles. And then, the, like, there's so much you could do with that. <laughs> like... I mean, that would be so fun if you could put any special on any weapon, but, like, you know, just when... Because then it would be, if you're just goofing around with friends, or if you're playing competitively, maybe they could, you know, come up with, the, you know, their own rules for that. If custom kits are allowed, if they're not, like, it would at least give people options. Oh my god. Ooh, I was hoping I would kill him. Yeah, we need- we- I mean, I hope we get Tricolor Turf. Be, you know, I'm assuming because we got Shifty Stations in Private Battles at the end of 2, we're going to get the Tricolor Turf stuff in Private Battles. I don't know that, though. I mean, I- it seems like an obvious no-brainer, but so do lots of other things that Nintendo does not do, so... Hard to say. Um... 
But yeah, I mean, it, my, my perfect... My ideal end to Splatoon 3 content is... I, I don't think custom kits are happening. <laughs> I think I think that is a pipe dream for Splatoon 3. Um, but I think in a perfect Splatoon game, Private Battles would have custom kits. And... You'd be able to do tricolor in Private Battles for sure. Not that I like tricolor that much. <laughs> it just feels like it should be a thing. I, I just... And challenges. Challenges in Private Battles would actually be huge. Like, challenges... I don't know. I, 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 challenges are really cool in theory. Like they're they just tweak some you know parameters in the game, and it, it totally like almost feels like a new game mode sometimes, and it breathes tons of new life into it. Like there's things like um, the big tower mode was like legitimately like super cool. Um, I I played like one game of the big curling bomb thing yesterday, and it was stupid but funny. And it's like I just feel like you know I just want to do that stuff with friends. <laughs> I know you can play challenges with friends, but it's like it's such a limited time frame that's so hard to actually get like a group of people together. Like having an actual like you know playing with seven other people you know doing challenges would be so funny. Like I I just I don't know why that's not in the game. <laughs> it it just feels like the most obvious thing, and it like it's not even any more work for them. Like I don't even care if it's limited to like the maps. Because, like, every challenge, like, has a specific rotation for whatever reason. Like, you can only play it on the map and mode they give. Like, I don't even care. Just do that, <laughs> but let us do them in private battles. That's all I'm asking for. It, it baffles me that that is not a thing in the game. Oh, hello, Crazy the Kid. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I have not set up Pretendo. I... I plan to at some point. I'm just kind of not in a rush. Um, like, I don't know, I, I'm a little conflicted, because it's like, I want Splatoon 1, I want the servers to be active enough that people are actually playing Splatoon 1, and that, you know, Pretendo can be an option, but, like, personally, I just don't have a lot of interest in playing Splatoon 1 on it right now. Um, I don't know, I kind of had my, my finale with Splatoon 1, um, I'm just kind of satisfied how I, I, you know, finished off playing the game, and... At the moment, I'm not super anxious to get back on it, but I'll probably want to play it again eventually, and I'll just set it up then. Uh, but I, I don't, I don't really think I'll do like streams of it or anything. Maybe like far in the future, but not right now. Um, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing with this upcaster right now. I could have killed that guy if I aimed better. Unfortunate. But yeah, I, I mean, I don't even know what I would want them to announce, because I don't, I don't, like... <laughs> I want third kids to be a thing. I don't know how they announce that, though. Because, like, seasons aren't even over. So, like, are they going to announce more seasons? Or are they just going to announce, like, after seasons end in, like, four months from now? How many, how many months is it actually? It's April, and it ends in like, it's like five months from now. Four or five, I don't know. <laughs> Four and a half months from now, seasons will end, or catalogs will end. Technically, they only ever said catalogs will end after two years, which catalogs seem to coincide with seasons, so, you know, that makes sense. But <laughs> I don't know how they would extend the content exactly if they are going to, and I don't know how they would like announce it this far in advance. So... It's hard to make an exact prediction. Wow, my aim with this is not existent right now. Um. Yeah, that was that was probably not happening. <laughs> they are not. They are not announcing a new game. <laughs> <sighs> Hello, Godwin. I don't know if Stamper is the move right now. Well, I don't know if there's anything else I want to play more than Stamper. <laughs> Let me see. I meant to click. Did I not click the gear button? Okay, I guess not. <laughs> Do, do. You know what? Okay, I was playing Luna yesterday, and I was kind of having fun with it, so why not? This isn't... Well, these maps this might actually be kind of decent. We'll see. We'll see. 
<clears throat> there isn't- I, I don't even- I don't know how I still mess up, like, why, why is there- well, I mean, that should be my fault. I don't know why there isn't a gear beer button in series, but that is, um, that is strange. I never got why that was so inconsistent. Oh, hello, Shrimpy. Welcome to the stream. Any specific hopes for S4? I mean, I, I haven't thought far ahead to Splatoon 4 yet, really. I mean, I want the story to be better. <laughs> um, side order was pretty good. I didn't like the Return of the Mammalian story very much. Side order was okay. I, I would like there to be like a good villain again. <laughs> Because <laughs> I like Octavio and I really like Tartar and I don't I just don't like Riz and um Smalls the same way. So I would hope that they have a more more interesting kind of overall premise in the future. But I don't know. I, I it's hard to say. Like I I'm not even really sure like gameplay wise where I want them to go with multiplayer or single player. I mean I just want the maps to be bigger. <laughs> you know. It's pretty much just the obvious things, I guess, that everyone says. Splatoon 1 style maps with Splatoon 3 movement and specials would pretty much be the perfect game. Um, shoot. Uh, I'm Team Bear Cubs. Whoa. I was reading chat and that just like whizzed by my head. Um... That's not reached, apparently? Okay. Everyone on blue is hacking. They beat Cosmic Cloud. Do not think it takes a hacker to beat me. I am not very good at this game. <laughs> um... Shoot. I keep thinking I have more range. I've been playing Custom Blaster too, so I keep... I think I'm like expecting this to have more range than it does. There's a Splatfest next week. Oh, shoot. Okay, well. Um, yeah, Springfest is next weekend. I I barely played the Curling Bomb Challenge. I literally got, like, one game in before the rotation changed, but... Um, it was funny. It felt like... I don't know, I mean... <laughs> I guess all the challenges are basically just like mods to the game almost, but um, it, it felt very like non-official, I guess. Maybe it's just jarring because it's like, you know, <laughs> they literally just scaled up a model, so it looked kind of stupid, but in a, in a good way, I guess. It was just silly. It's happening again in two hours, is it? Um... I may play some of that then. Dude, dude, dude. You don't see the place where you pick the choice? Um, it should be there. Just make sure you are connected to the internet. Um, I never played the Battle JoJo. I've heard that it wasn't super fun. <laughs> I've heard that the game mode is not very interesting, so... I I don't particularly care if they bring it back. It would be nice to have some kind of local multiplayer for Splatoon. I mean, there's no reason they couldn't do, like, split-screen. I don't think there's... I mean, I don't know. <laughs> that might be a little weird. I feel like they could hold off. Um, but if they did do local, I probably would just want it to be, you know, all the normal stuff in local. Like, just, just let us play the game, but split screen. Oh. I should have not gone straight for him. 
<laughs> I always I panic when I do Zipcaster. This is not the weapon I should be playing, by the way. I think I like <laughs> when rotation changed. I looked at the maps and then I like forgot that it wasn't tower control anymore. I should not be playing Luna on Rainmaker. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness, I almost just slipped through that grate. Um, but yeah, Zipcaster is not exactly helping me out here, especially if I panic and try to go straight at people to kill them and then they just shoot me. Ugh. Um... Yeah, that, that was not... That, this is not a weapon for this map. <laughs> not the way I'm playing anyway, not this mode. Bum, 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 bum. I do wonder what Final Fest will be for this game. I know we've talked about it a bit, but... I mean, they'll probably announce that kind of soon? It'll probably happen... I mean, if seasons end in August, I feel like Final Fest is either going to be August or maybe September if they wanted to do it, like, on the anniversary. Um... But I, I hope it's something really interesting again. Like... Something on the level of Chaos and Order. Is my teammate throwing- Oh my god. Um... If they were throwing, I was not aware of it. Honestly, I'm kind of- I'm kind of not, like, full concentration mode right now. <laughs> I'm kind of just chilling out. So, that might be why the gameplay is not super high quality at the moment. <laughs> Shoot. Don't think anyone's throwing. I don't I don't think it would be an idol fest. Um I I think the fact that they got deep cut out of the way at, for the anniversary fest, like I just think they're not doing that. Um If they are, I'm team off the hook easily. <laughs> Which I, w I used to be Squid Sisters, but I'm definitely would be off the hook now, but, um... I don't know. I know a lot of people want them to do, like, the three poisons, because it's, like, Deep Cut is, like, inspired off, like, the... I think it's, like, the a Buddhist thing. <laughs> um... But I, don't, I just think that's weird for a Splatfest. Like, I've talked about that before, but it's, like, I think... Picking your poison is just a strange, like... No one's gonna want to rally for their favorite poison. Like, <laughs> I just, I just, I don't know. I, normally, Splatfest are a thing you are rooting for, not like what is the least bad thing. I just, I, I feel like that's, that would be strange, <laughs> especially because it's like it's kind of a semi-obscure part of the lore. It's not really a thing most people know about or care about that much. So I just think it's weird. But I, I don't know what they would do instead. So. <laughs> It is, it is hard to come up with, you know, three teams. Like, there's not really a dynamic like Chaos versus Order, but three. <laughs> I feel like. Also, yeah, I mean, Kali versus Marie worked because it's like... I don't know, they like always had a kind of rivalry thing going. And it's like they specifically said they didn't want to do that for Off the Hook because it's like they're, they're just closer. <laughs> like, they wouldn't want to root against one another. Um, the only reason I don't want to play 96 right now is because I'm close to 5-starring it and I want to make a video on that, but I keep not doing that. Um, <laughs> let's try Dowsers. Why, why not? Let's, let's go in with Dowsers. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, they have built up, you know, this kind of thing where, where Deep Cut is very, they have a lot of, you know, Splatlandian pride and they, they don't like people from Inkopolis because they're... They're proud of their home, so it's like... I, I don't know if that's meant to go anywhere, or if that's just meant to be a part of their character. Like, I don't know if that means they would... If there was an idol fest, like, yeah, they would just vote for themselves. I mean, that would just be weird, too, because then it's like the other idols, like, normally don't even pick a team, so it's like, would they just, like... I don't know, I don't know, it'd be weird. <laughs> Theme related to time? I mean, yeah, a bunch of people are saying past, present, and future. I, I've heard that going around, but I just don't get how that works. Assuming they're still doing it as a, like, you know, pick a theme that the next game will be designed around. 
like Splatoon time moves in tandem with real time. So it's like, what does what does that actually mean? Like, do they go? You know, does it past is just going back to Inkopolis or like, you know, future? I just don't know what, how that would actually be applied to the game itself. And also present just feels weird. Like, I feel like no one would be on team present. <laughs> Maybe they would be. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's fun to think about, like, <laughs> it does feel like there are lots of possibilities, but it's also just hard... It's hard to know what direction they would go. I mean, I think it's fair to say they're self-centered. I, I feel like that's been... I don't know, I don't know. That's With Deep Cut, it's like... I think it's fun that they have, you know, very different personalities than the other idols, and that they're so, like, aggressive and, like, almost, like, spiteful. But it also just, like, I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I like the way they are written to some extent, but I don't, I, w I will never be on their side. <laughs> and it's, I think it's weird writing them so, like, antagonistically. I think that's why a deep cut fest would be weird, because, like, I feel like the fan favorites are very clearly still the Squid Sisters and Off the Hook, and I feel like they've written them to be, I don't want to say less likable necessarily, but less, like, you know, they're not really on your side. Like, you literally fight them <laughs> in the story mode, so it's like... I feel like it'd be weird to root for them. I feel like it's it's not a balanced thing. Like, Squid Sisters versus Off the Hook, maybe. Because they play pretty similar roles. Oh, okay. I thought I'd be safe on the great. <laughs> Yeah, there were a decent amount of new people dropping in. I mean, my my sub count is a lot higher <laughs> than it used to be um, when I was streaming consistently for a while, so... Makes sense that we would see some new faces. Oh, uh, shoot. Yeah, I mean... Oh, God. I wish there was more to deep cut, but at this point, I kind of don't care that much. <laughs> Because I, I just, I don't know. Personally, for me, I... I just don't like them as much. <laughs> I don't know. I think, it, I think it would take a lot for me to like Deep Cut anywhere near as much as I like Off the Hook. I just, I, their dynamic does not appeal to me as much. Um, so I'm, I'm not personally super bothered. Oh my god. But... I also just think it's too late. I just think realistically, I don't think we're in any more story content. For Splatoon 3, outside of like, you know, for Final Fest for Splatoon 2, we got, um, those little blurbs from like every character saying why they picked their team. So, I mean, we're, there's still like, you know, lore or like character, you know, I guess just dialogue. <laughs> there's a little bit of character writing left in Splatoon 3, assuming they do a similar thing for the Final Fest. But I don't think we're going to get any kind of massive reveals or anything that really gives them too much more depth at this point. Uh, I'd say Off the Hook is definitely my favorite now. It was Squid Sisters for a while, but... Um, I mean, Octo Expansion is just by far my favorite story. <laughs> I mean, I, again, I don't know. Like, Octo Expansion, I think, is is so good because of the lore established in Splatoon 1. <laughs> but that doesn't really have to do with the Squid Sisters. Um, so, I mean, Off the Hook are, are my favorite characters that actually do anything in the story. I just like their writing. I mean, it's it's just the chat logs. The chat logs carry them so hard, but <laughs> uh, I really, really like the way they're written in Splatoon 2. And side order, for that matter, but it's less it's less about side order, because frankly not much happens in that story. <laughs> I will say Oct has grown on me a lot. I know they're not really an idol, but, um, <laughs> like, thinking about their character more, um, I actually think they are very cool. I mean, I always thought they were cool, but I... I really, really like... 
um, their backstory and the stuff we got inside order for them. Oh god. Do, 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 do. This has not been a very good game, probably because I was too busy talking about Splatoon characters the whole time. <laughs> uh, okay, well, there's a possibility of victory. Never mind. Never, no, there's not. Do, do, do. Um, Callie, it's like a, a Twitter thing where people draw fan art of Callie because March 13th is Marie Day because it, it looks, you know, M A R 1 3. It's like Mario Day. So then people just decided that the 13th of the next month would be Callie Day. There's also like Marina Day and stuff, but I believe it started with Marie Day because people realized it was like Mario Day. I'm just gonna maybe pick a weapon I'm good at. I did the thing again, because I'm used to there being... I play way more open in the series, so I'm used to there being the, the button. Um, I'm just gonna play shot, because I'm good at shot, and games will probably go better. <laughs> and I can play this a bit more brain dead. Hello, Fanta. Welcome. Doo 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 doo. Oh, I forgot to get water. Maybe I... I, my <laughs> I don't know if my voice is noticeably, like, lower. I'm kind of tired. <laughs> I stayed up kind of late, and I'm kind of I'm kind of chilling very hard today. Um, I feel like it sounds like I just woke up because I kind of well not not just woke up. It is like two now, but <laughs> I'm not five star order shot. I I'll make the video. I <laughs> many many people have reminded me. Hello, hey, you can get fifteen star on shot now. I'm I'm aware. I'm working on it, but I, it is not there yet. Yeah, I, I might go grab um, a water at some point because I normally I normally go through one or two water bottles a stream depending on the length. Um, okay, we're fine. Please kill the guy. Oh my god, that was. A stupid interaction, but I'm glad it worked. Um, <laughs> I just kept running out of ink and then failing to aim. Okay, and I lived that somehow. Okay, yeah. Um, would have been nice if I killed them, but... <laughs> um, yeah, I can do open. I don't love the open rotation right now, which is partly why I'm dodging it, but... <laughs> uh, yeah. We can. Nice. Yeah, I mean... I mean, the thing is, Range Blaster, just as a main weapon, is already a lot better in this game than Splatoon 2. Um, I think largely because of Intensify, but also its kits are decent. Or, well, I don't know. I mean, no one uses Wave Breaker <laughs> on range, really, in competitive, but people do use Range Blaster just for the Range Blaster and the Suction Bomb. So, I think if you get something decent, um, it will it will probably still see use. I don't know if it will be as fun as Splatoon 1 CRB, but... Oh, I, I legitimately thought that was a jump. Okay, what? My bad. <laughs> I think Wave Breaker is fun. Uh, I think it's decent in solo queue, but I mean, that's just a... I, I don't play competitive. I just hear people say that Wavebreaker is apparently not very good in competitive, and by people I do mostly mean Chara, but <laughs> um, I mean, he is a range blaster guy in theory, so I guess he would know. I don't know. I, I, I don't play the weapon, so I don't have strong feelings about Wavebreaker on it. Um, I don't really play... The closest I came to playing a Wavebreaker weapon was Painbrush. Um, which I do enjoy, but not really one of my mains. I'll see, oh yeah, lack of ink armor, yeah. There's a lot, a lot of reasons blasters are better in Splatoon 3, but... 
If it gets like Splat Bomb or Kraken, I think it will still be fun. I don't know if it's getting both. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think it's like, Wave Breaker is really easy to destroy, like its HP is still pr like pretty low considerably, um, or re relative I guess to other objects in the game. Um, so a lot of times it just gets shredded instantly, like I think one Zooka shot destroys it. Um, oh god. And even if it does hit people, like, I think location data is just a lot less valuable and competitive. Um, in terms of like point sensors and stuff because people are going to be doing callouts and just telling you where people are anyway <laughs> So like obviously it is still nice to have a direct sight line on someone, but I think it's it's a lot less important in a um, Coordinated environment But yeah, it's it's still nice to kind of scout people out I definitely I think the buff is cool where it's like when you throw it. It's like a big point sensor um, I think that was a cool change that Give it a bit more value. I, I do think they should buff its HP still, though. Because, like, you can already counterplay it. Th there's already counterplay in the fact that you can jump over the waves. And it's like, th that feels like more interesting and interactive than just shooting it, <laughs> I guess, and breaking it instantly. So I think if it had a bit more HP and you were actually encouraged to jump over the waves a bit, that would just be, you know, it'd be stronger, obviously. But I, I think it'd be more fun, honestly. Um... Even maybe playing against it would be more fun. Uh, nice. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. We we're not. If the team, I think we were kind of splitting up. If we went to the same place, we might have actually been able to get lead there. Yeah, I think it's it's strange that you can't break cooler. Um, I honestly don't know why you can't. Especially with the fact that people use it like a shield on tower control now, like... Oh! Okay! <laughs> Good Zooka, I don't know if that's gonna be enough to get us the victory. Uh... Yeah, we're going, we're going this way? Okay, okay, don't, don't, don't just go and get shot. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> uh... Oh, that's bad. That's maybe bad. Oh, wait, can you just... We were actually really close to lead there. <laughs> Unlucky. Um, I'm not actually sure what my, my viewership peak was on a stream. Because I normally... I, I don't have, like, the viewer count. <laughs> I used to have the viewer count on screen at all times, but I think that was kind of bad for uh, mentality. Especially when I, you know, barely got any viewers. Um, so I don't really check it very often. I know we hit like 30 or something. The Splatoon 1 stream was pretty big, and so was the No Hack Run stream, I think. I don't actually know if I've ever hit 40. Because, um, on, on Twitch they tell you, like, your average, like, viewership or whatever, but YouTube, as far as I'm aware, doesn't have a stat for that. Maybe they do on, like, the, the YouTube Live Studio. I actually never have that open. Um, I just use OBS, so I don't really have a reason to open that. So, I do not know. I do know, I mean, I, they get views, the VODs get views, um, like normal videos once they're up, and some of them got a pretty good amount. Um, again, especially the No Hack Run and the Splatoon 1 stream. Do, do, do. Hello, Caleb. I should have gone to grab a water, probably, but I'll do that after this game. I've actually been playing a bit of Sea Jet, um, like a very, a very little bit. I, it was like a week ago or something, but <laughs> uh, it was kind of fun. I actually do kind of like that weapon. I do feel like, I, I don't know, casually, like, oh, okay, um, this game has so many weapons, like, <laughs> I, I go, like, you know, I have, like, a thousand hours in the game, and there are weapons I have not touched, and that's not just because I like to play, you know, a similar small pool of weapons, but, like, 
I, I really don't get the whole weapon kits argument. <laughs> I just don't think the game is lacking in content. I, I feel like there's this whole narrative that like all the updates are so small. Like I just I just literally feel like there's enough stuff in the game. And I mean, obviously, that's just my take, <laughs> but I don't know. It's always weird to me when people say that. Like, I just literally think there's there's so much in the game. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why the points were special. I mean, I don't know why I got Storm in the first place. Um, Because it basically just has two, like, very passive, supportive playstyles. And in Splatoon 1, it had Kraken. Um, so I think a lot of people were hoping it would get Kraken again. I, guess, I mean, maybe that would be kind of similar to 96 Deco. But I hope if it gets a third kit, it does get a more aggressive one. Whether or not it's Kraken doesn't really matter, but I, I hope it gets something that isn't just a sit in the back of the map and paint type of playstyle. Oh, uh, shoot. Well, it's going to reset. I mean, more kits is always a good thing. I'm more kits. I, I don't know. I get like, I'm not saying I don't want more content. I just feel like there is a... I, I am not disappointed. <laughs> I'm really not disappointed. I, I want third kits for sure. So, I mean, like, if third kids don't have it, I would be disappointed. But I just, the rate that stuff is coming out, like, it just, it just doesn't bother me. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, my God. I, like... So, my take, I guess, which is maybe kind of weird... <laughs> I don't dislike them artificially lengthening the game's lifespan. Because <laughs> it's like... Sure, you can say, like, oh, they could just make content faster and end the game with more content. But it's like, for whatever reason, they're in a position where they don't want to do that. <laughs> and I don't think we're going to change Nintendo's minds on how much content they want to put in the game. They have a roadmap, and that's what they're going to do. And, you know, I mean, when content extensions happen, I don't think it's like a, you know, in the moment decision. Like, <laughs> the Splatoon 2 content extension, I'm sure they said, like, okay, you know, we're gonna develop the game on this timeline, and if there's still, like, an active player base, if there seems like there's enough of a reason for us to continue content at this point, then we will do that. Like, I'm, I'm sure they said that like, at the very beginning. They did not just say, okay, we're going to make Explosher and Ballpoint now. So, <laughs> um, with Splatoon 3, like, Maybe their plan is to make third kits for like half the weapons. Like, I, I don't know. I'm trying to be conservative with my guesses because I, I don't have faith that they will do, you know. I, I think I think it's like ideal situation for Splatoon 3 is every weapon gets a third kit. I don't even think that's happening because it never happened in the past two games. Um, but I think it, it, like that is the best case scenario is every weapon gets a third kit. And if they decided that from the beginning of... The game's lifespan, you know, they planned out a roadmap of when they're going to develop those weapons. So, they could make all the weapons in two years and give us that, and then the game is gone. Like, like updates are gone. There's no more hype cycle. And that's just it. <laughs> or, they could stretch it out across two and a half years, three years. You know, I, I don't know how, how late it will go. Like, I mean, Splatoon 2, they ended up giving us, like, repeat fest and stuff way late into the game's lifespan. Like... I would prefer, as long as we're getting that same amount of content, which I don't think is changing, like, it's important to voice criticism for a game if, you know, you want things to be different, because Nintendo does sometimes listen and does actually implement changes, like with with splatter color screen, you know, the, the effect was hurting people's eyes. I know it's not perfect now because the noise still hurts people's ears, but, you know, maybe that's a bad example, but you get the idea. Like, there was a problem, people gave feedback, and there was a solution. But a lack of content is not a problem. Like, you can't just beg that for them to add more stuff to the game, because that, you know... I don't really think that's a valid criticism in a game that has as much content as this, personally. Um, so I think there's a certain amount of content that is going to be in the game. It's just how long it takes to get put into the game. So for me, I would rather take it, I, I would rather it take them three years to add all the content into the game than one and a half years. Because that just means, you know, there's more season trailers, there's more speculation in the community, there's more hype. You know, we get this, like, hype cycle of, of like, you know, it's fun to speculate about what they could add to the game. It's fun to overanalyze trailers. It's fun, like, it creates discussion around the game. I think it's actually a very smart way to, you know, 
they're cultivating the community of Splatoon. They're getting people talking about the game. If they just dropped all the content in the game and that was it, you know, that would be it. <laughs> so, like... I just think people build up... I, I don't know. Obviously, yes, it's fair to be disappointed in Nintendo for not properly balancing the game or not giving, you know, fun weapon kits. But at the end of the day, like, I don't think there is an objectively fun way to design it. Like, I... There's a weapon that a bunch of competitive players are going to be disappointed about, and they're going to make a video about it. And then a bunch of people will say, oh, Nintendo's so bad at making kits. But, you know, there's probably a bunch of casual players that'll pick up that kit and have a ton of fun with it. Like, the, the <laughs> Nintendo is not designing the game for the Splatoon YouTuber. They're designing it for the entire Splatoon community of, like, 11 million people, many of whom are, like, very, very casual players. <laughs> so I just, I just think looking at it realistically, like, I don't think there's much objectively, like, wrong that they're doing. <laughs> I think people are disappointed because Nintendo is not making the game the way they want it to be. But I, like, I just think if you look at it from how they're th seeing the game, like, again, it, you can still voice criticisms about it, but I just, I feel like people have a kind of misconstrued idea of what Nintendo is doing. Like, I don't think they're just sitting there, <laughs> you know, with a bunch of weapon kits. Oh, they could release those now. Sure, they could release those now, but then the game would be over and no one would be talking about it anymore because all the content would be there. So, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's... I don't really like the narrative that has been built around the game that the devs are like, you know, like the, the updates are small on purpose. <laughs> they know, like they know what they're doing and you don't have to be happy about it. But I think saying, I think people act like they know more than they do. I, obviously, I don't know. <laughs> I don't work at Nintendo. I'm just another guy on the internet saying my opinion, but I ultimately I'm just not disappointed and if you are disappointed obviously you're going to have a different stance on it but I think if you look at it like that it is easier to not be disappointed <laughs> like I, I think if you look at it that way you realize that not every kit is being designed to be competitively viable you realize that they are intentionally trying to lengthen the game's life cycle even if it is you know artificial development time like I just, I just think that is, yes, that is what they're doing. <laughs> and if you acknowledge that, then, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't like the argument, too, when people are like, oh, bamboo players have had to wait two years for the second kit. Like, bamboo players are not a different kind of person. Bamboo players can use all the weapons in the game that everyone else can use. Like, <laughs> you're not locked in to a main. And it's like, yeah, I know people have preferred playstyles, but it's like, I don't... I don't know, and it's the the whole like shooter privilege thing. Like, I just think it's just it's a totally like just incorrect way of viewing the game. Like, that just doesn't make any sense. Everyone has access to the same content. <laughs> then there's no no one is being like oppressed or marginalized because they didn't get their weapon kit <laughs> as fast as someone else. And ultimately, they're all going to be in the game by the end of it. So it's like, who cares? I don't know. Like, the fact that all mains were in the game at launch, I feel like means there's really. I just think that's a not a valid complaint. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe that's unfair if the weapon kit sucks, but like, you know, push the weapon, you know, see how good it can be. I don't know. Just because a YouTuber says it's bad doesn't doesn't mean you can't make it work in solo queue. Doesn't mean, you know, maybe just no one's tried it out yet. And I don't know, like, you know, I've I've been playing this series for almost nine years now, so maybe it's just I've just come, you know, to expect a certain amount from Nintendo. And maybe other people, you know, maybe it's it's valid to want more, because you you know, you look at like Fortnite, <laughs> which like you know, gameplay wise, I, I'm not trying to compare the gameplay, but their updates are like pretty, you know, big. Like they're constantly changing the game and adding mechanics and, you know, messing with balancing, like and other competitive games get patches more frequently. But I just, I don't know. <laughs> At some, on some level, it's just me being more complacent. <laughs> like, I'm just not a super confrontational person. And I just ultimately kind of don't have the energy to complain enough. <laughs> Which, you know, 
can be a good or bad thing. Um, but I also do think people don't... I don't know. I, I think there's a misunderstanding about the way the game is being developed. And I don't think Nintendo is pretending it takes them three months to make nine weapon kits. I think they are well aware, and they're just doing it on purpose. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. The main disappointment to me is still just the maps. I, I just feel like the maps... I don't know. I, 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 the thing with weapon kits, too, is like... How many weapon kits are you actually playing in every update? <laughs> like, for me, maps are so much bigger. Because everyone is playing on the maps. The maps, you know, give you options, they give you movement, they give you, like... Like, the maps are how you play the game. Like... The, no matter what weapon you're using, the map has more influence over how you play the game than any one weapon ever could. Like, the map is what gives you sniper purchase. The map is what gives you Rainmaker routes. Like, that's that's where you're going. So for me, like, I think there are enough maps in the game. I wish they were better. <laughs> so I wish, I mean, for me, the main complaint, I wish they reworked maps significantly and made them a lot better and larger and had more options. Like, that's my complaint. <laughs> I It's not that I don't have criticisms for Splatoon 3. I have a lot. I just think... I don't know. They're very different than, like, I feel like the loudest voices in the community. Not that people don't complain about the maps. Obviously, people complain about the maps. But I just think the maps are... I, I just don't... I don't think weapon kits are even an issue. <laughs> like, weapon kits are not even on my radar as, like, a thing I, I'm disappointed with in the game. It is only the maps. Also, rip. That was a really bad loss. Um... <laughs> but, yeah. My, I mean, okay, my main weapon is Splattershot. Like, I, absolutely, I have a lot of, you know, I did get lucky. I, I like shooters. I, like, I have a lot of good kits in the game. But again, it's not like, a, you're not, like, born with a weapon kit. Like, everyone has access to the same content. So it's, like, just saying, like, oh, you're a shooter player. You have good kits. Like, okay, but yeah, so do you. Like, <laughs> you can also play them. I don't know. I think, I think people, it's fun to have, like, pride in a main weapon and, like, to have a sort of, like, sense of identity with it, but not to the extent that you're saying things like shooter privilege. Like, I just think that's a ridiculous term. I think that's stupid. <laughs> I, I do not think that makes any sense at all. Because it's not a privilege. Everyone has access to it. Like, <laughs> which I know that the term has kind of died down. I know. I wish there were more people in the discussion, too, because I feel like everything comes back to, like, you know, I think Prochara is a very good content creator. I have absolutely no hate for him. I think there should be more people like him. I wish there were more people talking in the conversation. Like, I know some people get mad at Char because a bunch of people will, like, you know, his community will all just listen to what he says. That's not Char's fault. It's other people's fault for not sharing their own opinions. We need more voices in the community. So I guess that's partly what I'm trying to do right now. But, <laughs> um, you know, I think... I don't know. I just don't like how negative everyone is about the game <laughs> at, at the end of the day. And I think the complaints people have could be mitigated by just interacting with the other content that is already in the game. <laughs> so uh, I am going to go grab some water. I will be back very soon. Um, but I do need to do that because my voice is starting to dry up or something. I don't know. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, I mean, it's... I know, like, the criticism, like, I mean, that's what I always say. It's like, you know, I'm not trying to hate on the game. It's just... I mean, that's that's my opinion towards the community. I'm not trying to hate on the community. <laughs> I love the Splatoon community. I know what the Splatoon community can be when everyone is just having a good time enjoying the game. So, the criticism is good, but I also just wish there were more... I don't think I would care as much <laughs> if there was just more... I don't... I, again, I don't know where the casual content went. <laughs> Splatoon 2 had so many, like, casual content creators that just, like, made videos having fun on the game, and I just feel like that's, like, weirdly just lacking in Splatoon 3. I just feel like the whole kind of... Um... Whole perspective of the game kind of swayed more competitive, and I don't really know why. Like... 
<laughs> so I think if there was just again, if there were more people like Chara even, you know, just expressing their own opinions, if there were more people like kind of casual, you know, more people like Jmoji, I mean, he's still here, <laughs> who are just having fun with the game, then I think it wouldn't be an issue. I just feel like, um, I don't know. It's just, I, I like the game, I like following the game, I like talking to people about the game, so I wish more people brought unique takes to the table, I guess. Um, it was a big thing on Twitter a while ago, the shooter privilege thing. I, it it kind of hasn't been as much of a problem, like, that's on me for bringing it up, <laughs> because it isn't, it isn't a thing people say nearly as much anymore. Um, but it's basically just the idea that the devs balance the game in the favor of the shooter class more than other classes and that they get better weapon kits. Um, but first of all, most of the weapons in the game are like, there, there are more shooters than any other weapons in the game. So, from the very start, it's just a bad take. <laughs> because, obviously, there are going to be more shooter buffs when there are more shooters. Um, <laughs> but, also, it is a shooter game. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I think it's a, it's a weird kind of like, I don't even want to say it's a min, I, I guess it's a minority opinion that like got like very loud for some reason. It was just a way for people to be annoyed at other people on Twitter. Like it was not a real argument. The splatter shot doesn't have five different versions. The splatter shot has two different versions and a bunch of skins. That's not, <laughs> and again, it's not a privilege. At best, it's like a bias. It is not a privilege, because everyone has access to the same thing. <laughs> That's why I, the word privilege is the problem, because it's not a privilege. We are all playing the same video game. Like, you, you can choose a shooter. <laughs> it's not a privilege. But yeah, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I know. I'm. I'm just complaining now. So I don't want to. I don't want to take it too far. But it is hard going back to Splatoon one, two. You know, and then and then coming back to this, and it's like <laughs> I feel like all the problems are kind of more. At least for me, they're kind of at at the top of mind. Like the difference in maps is so noticeable. Like, the maps just feel so different in Splatoon 1, and I, I really do miss that kind of design. But, yeah. Overall, I'm, I'm pretty content with the state of the game. And ultimately, okay, well, guess, one last thing I'll say <laughs> is the whole thing with we weapon kits I don't get is, like, I think third kits are extremely likely. I think the content cycle for Splatoon 3 has been extremely similar to the past two games. I mean, they did the seasons thing, but, like, uh, as an overall time scale, like, the amount of weapons added to the game, the amount of maps. First of all, it's been more in Splatoon 3 than any other game. Yes, like, we had third kits earlier for Splatoon 2, but we also had less main weapons in Splatoon 2, so I feel like that argument is kind of just void. Like, I just, I, I think that literally doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, and ultimately, we're probably still getting third kits because it has been so similar. Like, we can probably expect third kits. So until we get third kits or don't get third kits, and until we see what those kits are, I just feel like it's literally a useless conversation to complain about kits because we're just going to get different ones <laughs> that will probably be better in a lot of cases. So it's like, we'll just wait and see. Like, I just feel like what the game ends up being is so much more important than what the game is currently. And yeah, if you're a competitive player playing the game every day, I could see someone having a different take than that. But if it's like, even as someone who plays the game probably like three times a week or more, <laughs> I just feel like I can wait, you know? I can just wait for when the when the other kids get in.
Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, I just think for me, there's a difference in complaining about the game and just being like whining on Twitter and acting like there's like some serious problem with Nintendo's developers. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to like def defend the corporation, but I'm like, you know, I just think it's a lack of understanding of hype cycles and the games industry and like, you know, I just think it's kind of a common sense thing that's going over a lot of people's heads that, like, they are intentionally artificially lengthening the game's lifespan. Like, yes, that is a thing they are doing. <laughs> there, there's a reason for it. it like, it, it's better for the community. Or, in theory. But, yeah. I mean, I don't know. This I don't care that much about Splatfest. I guess that's a whole other argument. I mean, that's a different perspective, but <laughs> weapon kits coming out with only a few Splatfests left is not a thing that really... I don't know. Like, Splatfest are, like, less than 1% of the playtime of a person who plays the game consistently, so I guess I don't really care. Oh my god, I spilled my water. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. It was not that bad to spill. Um, <laughs> the P2P thing is a valid complaint, but that's a whole different story. That's not that's not a hype cycle, development cycle thing. That's an online infrastructure thing. That's a different argument. They added more main weapons in Splatoon 2 after the start of the game because all the main weapons weren't at the start of the game. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, that's not, I feel like people need, people miss the context of that. Splatoon 3 started with all of the main weapons in the game. Splatoon 2 didn't. People, people had, if you're talking about people waiting, people having to wait for their content to get in the game, there weren't even main weapons at the start of Splatoon 2. Like, that was, it was a worse launch by far than Splatoon 3, as far as content. I just, I just don't think it's a fair comparison. Or at least it's, if you're comparing it, then Splatoon 3 was better. <laughs> also, again, it just doesn't matter. <laughs> We're gonna get all the all the weapons. I just, I don't really care how long it takes. In fact, I want it to take a long time, because that's fun. <laughs> it is fun to have to wait for things. It is fun to get excited for things. It is fun to see trailers. It is fun to react to things. Like, I, I want it to take a long time. Okay. Oh god. Oh my god. Whoa. That did not work. <laughs> I don't know why they don't nerf pencil. I'm not gonna <laughs> not gonna defend that one. I mean balance I, I don't know. I feel like balance is a whole other conversation from weapon kits too. Like that's <laughs> I don't know. I think they they generally balance the game pretty well. Like as a person who just plays solo queue and open, there's a bunch of pencils and squeezers. And I wish there were less of those. <laughs> but like it's always just like a few weapons that you see a little too often. It's really nothing game-breaking. I think it's it's greatly over-exaggerated how much it matters for the average player. Competitive players have a whole different, you know, I think that's completely valid. <laughs> I think if you're a competitive player, talking about balance patches is a whole different story. But I just think, you know, seeing a competitive player get upset at a patch does not mean you have to get upset at a patch. Because you are probably not a competitive player. <laughs> and if you are, fair enough. But most people are not. Yeah, but the, uh, the vast majority of weapons are, are good, like, <laughs> I don't know. 
I've I survived Splatoon 1 Luna. I survived Splatoon 1 Slosher. I survived Splatoon 2 Tri Slosher. I survived main power up. <laughs> I can survive a pencil. Personally, that's the way I see it. <laughs> I think I think this is like the le the best balanced game we've had so far, like by far in the series. And there's always going to be like a lowest common denominator that people will compare to. Like, <laughs> there's always going to be a complaint because it will always not be perfect. But it's it's so much better than it literally like ever was before. Yeah, I don't think pencil playstyle is the issue. It's just the fact that it like invalidates other weapons that fill the same role. That's just like such a well, I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say that's like a, a current in the moment problem, but I guess it it has been a thing for like six months now, so <laughs> it is kind of a bit of an issue. Uh I don't I don't feel like playing shot right now. Was that? Oh Captain Astra. Okay, cool. Um I'm gonna play Reflux. Because <laughs> Dan likes Reflux, and he told me to play it the other day, and I actually had some fun with it. So we're gonna try this. You know, I can- we can- we can do open. Let's do open. Let, why not? Sure. Um, we'll- we'll do the pool. Anyone wants to join? Pool is Cosmic Cloud, as per usual. Do 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 do. This is my moment. I mean, making a kit, I think that's also a different... <laughs> like, they don't just... I'm not gonna argue it takes three months to balance ten kits. But it takes more than the 10 minutes to, you know, assign the sub and special and make the model. Like, I think there's a... <laughs> I think that's another misconception of, um... People in the community is that, like, you know... No one's pretending it takes three months to model a weapon. You know, there is some effort that goes into balancing the weapon. And then, again, you know, I, I just think there's a... For whatever reason, like, I mean, the, the part I can't explain. <laughs> For whatever reason, I think there's just a certain amount of content they want to add to the game. And I don't think they want to exceed that. Um, like... They've created a timeline for the game, they know how many kits they're going to add in each season, and that's just what they're doing. Um, and they could have decided from the beginning that they were going to add more kits each season, and we'd end up with more weapons. But for whatever reason, there's just a certain amount of content they want to add, and that's that. So, I can't explain that. I don't know why they, they put, you know, at some point you have to put an artificial limit on it. One could argue they could make more kits in total for the final game. Um, for whatever reason, they decided they don't want to. And, you know, maybe enough people complaining could change their minds on that, but I kind of don't see it happening. I mean, I can't really think of any time in Nintendo history where people just complained about a lack of content and they said, okay, we'll make more content. <laughs> like, that's not what that's not what content extensions are for Splatoon. I, like, they plan... Again, I don't know this for sure, but I think it's extremely likely that from the beginning of the game's development, they plan to, you know, do a drip feed of content after launch, and then at some point they decide if they're going to extend that. But I, I do not think partway through the development of Seasons in Splatoon 3 they're just going to go, Oh, people want more things in the game, let's just develop faster. I just I just literally don't think that's happening. Um, <laughs> and that, you know, maybe people have different opinions on that. May, maybe I just have low efficacy, and I, I don't believe in the community's voice enough to make that change, but I, I don't. <laughs> I, I just don't think that's happening. So I, I honestly, for me, it's just I don't think it's worth talking about. I think people just say, I want more kits. It's like, okay, well, they're not making more kits. Sorry. Like, <laughs> it's kind of it. I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Like, not, I'm not trying to, like, I'm not trying to get mad at anyone in particular. Like, I, I, it's a fair thing to ask, but people ask it so often that I'm like, I just, 
what do you think is gonna happen? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what people think Nintendo's gonna do. Like, uh, I'm just kind of tired of hearing it. Also, this comp is horrible that we're fighting. Oh my god. Why, why is this happening? <laughs> Well, but again, they're not making every kit to fit a competitive playstyle. Like, someone probably likes Dreadringer, and they like Beacons, and they're gonna have a very fun time playing, you know, casual games with that kit. Like, I, I just, I don't think, I think there's very few kits in the game, if any, that no one likes. I think there, there are 11 million people playing the game. I think someone's gonna like the kit. I know, uh, for example, <laughs> um, Generic Dan in chat. Everyone saw the Reflux Deco kit with Wall and Reef Slider and said, Oh, that's dead on arrival. This kit sucks. That's horrible. It's terrible for the weapon. No one's going to play this. And I know a person, Generic Dan, in chat, <laughs> who loves that weapon. It's a very fun, like, you know, he, he likes the playstyle. He likes the, you know, how the wall works on the weapon. So, like, I just think people... I think it's a little narrow-minded to think that just because a kit doesn't fill a competitive niche, that it's bad content for the game. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think that is... That's not how Nintendo is approaching content for the game. So I think expecting them to do that is only going to lead to disappointment. Like, that's that's why I'm not disappointed in the kits, because I feel like I, I understand that that's how some of them are going to be. So... That's fine. I'm not calling. I'm, I'm not calling you out. I'm shouting. I have a real example, a real live example in the chat right now. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I have no ill will towards anyone. I'm just think. I wish more people could, you know maybe realize that not all the kits i don't know and i mean people are going to be disappointed like even if people know that people are going to be disappointed so it's it's not a thing that it can ever really you know i get i get why it happens i get that competitive players want every kit to be viable i uh, you know i mean that's it's a fair thing for them to want from their perspective so i understand it i just think realistically that is not how the game has ever been developed so it doesn't make sense to wish for it and you're only setting yourself up for disappointment You feel like a specimen in a lab. I'm not I'm not trying to make you feel that way, but <laughs> Oh god. Nope. Cool. This weapon is kinda of fun, by the way. Um <laughs> I'm trying to make him feel that way. Oh, okay. Fair enough then. Oh, okay. They missed with the bomb. Shoot. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know. I hope I like. I'm not trying to come across as, as negative either, which is like it, it's the annoying thing. <laughs> you know, I hate to complain about complaining. So I'm trying to just give people a more practical perspective so that they might not be so disappointed. It's just it's just patterns too. Like it's just, you know, you look at the past Splatoon games, you look at the history of Splatoon 3. I and I don't, you know, there's no reason to assume that a pattern is going to change unless given, you know, <laughs> evidence to suggest that it will. So if you just look at how the game has been developed, that's probably how it's going to keep going. And if you do that, then you won't be disappointed. You can just choose to enjoy it or not. That was not good. Uh, This is very winnable if we just don't die. Yeah, I really, I mean, the annoying thing is I feel like maps, 
I mean, in theory, it's easy to design better kits than to fix the maps, <laughs> but I feel like the, the maps are things we know get changes. You know, no weapon kit in the history of Splatoon has ever gotten changed after it's been released. Um, and plenty of maps have been reworked. So I think if we are if we are calling for change, if we the community are trying to use our voice to, you know, ask for improvements to the game from the company, we should ask for map reworks, <laughs> which we do, which obviously that is a big thing. But I really think that should be the main like 100 percent like Nintendo. This map sucks. <laughs> Make it better. Also, yeah, Milo, I, I agree. I was I was kind of procrastinating playing open. Um, because I really do not want undertow zones, but hopefully we just keep getting Manta, because that one's alright. Also, hopefully we never fight that team comp ever again, because what 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 is going on here? Uh, I would not recommend Quad Reef, <laughs> but uh, I cannot stop you from choosing other weapons. Custom Explo got special change from Baller to Heavy Baller, effectively replacing it special with Thin Air. Yes. I mean, it, it, could, it can use it defensively, kind of, maybe? I don't know. I did not play that weapon. I just know it was bad. Or the Baller was bad, at least. Um... But yeah, I really like this main weapon, actually. I've liked it since launch, but I just don't like its kits. I don't... I mean, this kit is, like, good and kind of fun. I like curling on it, but just missiles... I just hate Tenta missiles. <laughs> I don't like fighting them, I don't like using them, i am just never been a fan, so... I wish this got something different, but... I mean, that's fair that you don't care, but Nintendo does. Like, I'm, I'm not saying you have to like all the kits in the game. I'm just saying if you realize that Nintendo is not making the game for only comp players, <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm not saying people can't be disappointed, because obviously people are still going to be disappointed, but I think there's a... You know, you have to kind of meet them halfway. <laughs> you have to realize that the game isn't going to be exactly what you want. And... You know, saying that you want a weapon to be more competitive, competitively viable is not a good argument to Nintendo. Like, I don't think that's feedback they're going to listen to, because that's not how they've ever designed the game. So, I just think it's a fruitless effort, I guess. But that's my opinion. I don't even know how we got on the topic of just like talking about content cycle. I was talking about like Splatfest or whatever. <laughs> Final Fest. Oh my god. I'm not the best with this weapon, in case you can't tell. Oh my god. I keep landing a shot on people, but it's not enough. I know that this can just cap these zones instantly, at least. Uh. Oh my god. <clears throat> what do you think is the best map in the game? Um. I don't really know. <laughs> Honestly. Sturgeon a lot. I don't know if that's a weird pick. It's a, it's a Splatoon 2 map. <laughs> I always kind of like Sturgeon. Uh, zones especially, but... Bluefin is very fun. Um, I don't know if it's like... Definitely not like objectively the best map. Again, and there isn't really an objective because some maps are just fun and some are better for competitive, but... 
I just like big maps. Maps with options. Um, more than options, too. Like, something, I don't know, I feel like... The map discussion is always- I, I might, like, Loki make a video about this. <laughs> like, I don't really know what the point would be, just a, a Splatoon 1 appreciation thing, if anything, but, um... Like, it's it's not just the number of routes that makes a map good, and I think that's what, um... I mean, for example, I-, I Again, I would love to have more people to talk about than just Chara, but he's the main one who kind of talks about this, but, you know, lots of his, like, things talking about maps, he kind of just really focuses in on, like, how many options there are. And that's a very important thing for maps, but I don't, like, that's not the only thing that matters. Um, for me, it's like, and it's not, it's not just like overall gimmicks. For, for me, I don't know, like, what the word to describe it. There's like certain specific, like, features or set pieces on maps, especially in Splatoon 1. And like, I always notice this when I go back to that game. But it's like, there will just be a certain dynamic that just like that map has and no other map in the game has. And that's, I, I was really focusing on that actually with um with Moray. And Moray Towers is a map, you know, competitive players hate it. Lots of casual players don't like it. Some people really like it. I don't know, very, very divisive map, I guess. So like not, you know, in theory, not the best example of a good map design. But one thing it does have besides lots of options um, is it has the big overlook wall. And in Rainmaker, you know, I have so many specific memories of playing on Moray that, unlike any other map, you climb the overlook wall with the Rainmaker, like, there's a long, basically safe route you can take on the right, or you can push this risky route on the left where you climb up this massive wall. If you climb up the wall, you just instantly get, like, 40 points. And, like, normally Rainmaker doesn't work like that. Normally it ticks down one at a time, there's, like, these, you know, distance units, how close you are to the pedestal. But if you take that risky route, then you just, like, instantly get, like, 40 points. And I think that stuff is, like, so cool. Um, and then, like, you have, like, Camp Triggerfish, where, um, like, again, in Rainmaker, you have, like, you can go the middle route, or you can go to this left route, where you have to take this really risky path um, up this, like, great bridge, but you're kind of protected from the enemy spawn, so there's, like, this give and take. Like, I just feel like they used to design maps like that, where there were, like, these set pieces. And maps in Splatoon 3 are just, like, they just don't have those. <laughs> there's just, like, ramps and blocks, and then the goal. Um... Manta's a Splatoon 2 map, so it's kind of somewhere in between. I'd say the cool set piece with Manta is, like, you know, it has the big mast in the middle that's, like, unique terrain. So, unique terrain is also important, but it's... For me, there's there's no part on Manta, like, especially in the ranked modes, as where it matters for me. Like, Manta has that big, you know, mast, and there's, there's an interesting dynamic there, but the actual, like, gameplay of the zone is mostly, you know, you, you paint a zone, you swim to the other zone, you paint a zone. And you can say that for every two-zone map that's ever existed. Like, <laughs> that is what two-zone maps are. There's not really an interesting, like, feature that makes that gameplay different than, like, um... What's another two-zone map? I think there's not a lot of two-zone maps in this game. Um... <laughs> I actually cannot think of one at the moment. But you get the idea. Like, it's... And, like, especially on something like, um... You know, the, the problem with, like, the Tetris piece thing that everyone talks about in Splatoon 3, it's not just that every map has the same shape, because um, they can be the same shape, but have some kind of unique feature. Like, I'm trying to think of, like, um, even, like, Walleye Warehouse, which is an extremely linear map in Splatoon 1 and 2, um, but it has, like, this side route on the right, where... You know, there's like this corner you can peek around, and then there's like a grate. So there's like, there's two different ways you can uh, peek around that corner, and it's basically just like a game of like, who can like, catch the other person off guard first. And it's like, I think that's really fun. I think there's like, there's unique gameplay there that no other map has, because it's just, it's an interesting, you know, just way the map is designed with the, there's a jump, there's a, a corner. Um, just the way, you know, you have to navigate the space is different than every other map. And I think, for me, that's the problem with <laughs> Splatoon 3, is like, just, the maps just don't have those unique features. They all just feel exactly the same. A game on Barnacle and Dime can feel almost identical to a game on, um, like another map, like, um, what's it called? Mincepeat Metalworks. Like, there's just a goal that's in the back left, your spawn is in you know, the front right, <laughs> and you just take the objective, and you walk over a platform and some greats, and you're there. And there's not, there's no, like, moment 
that you have to there's no like there's like choke points but they aren't fun interesting choke points it's just like oh there's just a less terrain here <laughs> you know they just they just didn't put a part of the map here so i don't know it's hard it's hard to like describe in a small number of words which <laughs> is a problem i have a lot um that it's why i like scripted videos because <laughs> sometimes i can just i it's hard to concisely describe something unless i have time to like write it down but that's what I feel like is missing, and it's it's unfortunate because I think it's really hard to add that in a rework. I think it's really hard to rework a map and add as like a defining feature like that. I think it's kind of something that has to be in there from the start, um, which is why the map reworks for Splatoon 3 don't really work because they don't they don't fix that problem. They might add a bit of space, you know, in a in a perfect world they add another route, but they're very rarely going to add a defining feature that adds unique gameplay that can only be found on that map. And that's what I, I want to return. <laughs> and Splatoon 3 had that, because I just the way I remember Splatoon 1 games. And of course, of course, nostalgia plays a factor into this. <laughs> but the way I remember Splatoon 1 games, like it feels like there's like a story almost. Like there's a, you know, there are these moments of tension where, you know, your team is is doing some risky maneuver. And then, you know, you, you get a comeback. Like, it just feels so much more satisfying to overcome the odds in Splatoon 1, because it really feels like you're using the terrain to your advantage. Like, there's... The platforming and decision-making aspects of Splatoon are, are as much there as, like, the gunplay. And, you know, timing specials and all of that. And I, I just feel like the game has kind of... I think Splatoon 3 maps are kind of reductive to what Splatoon gameplay can be. I think it, it limits... It doesn't just limit routes, but it limits what different routes can feel like <laughs> and and what different gameplay the movement can allow um so that's a very long-winded way of saying that but <laughs> yeah um i don't think most splatoon 3 maps are really fixable unless they're willing to do like significant uh changes I've just been I've just been yapping today. This has been a yap stream. I mean that's all what all of them kind of are, but <laughs> I don't know. I hope this is interesting to someone. I mean you guys are still here, but <laughs> also yeah, reflux is a, a weird weapon for me. I'm I'm trying it out. I always I always liked it. I just didn't like the kits, but it, I'm having fun with it now. It's good for zones, so. Yeah, I, I know Stu you see it at the end. Can send out an invite again. Do 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 do. Oh, Milo joint. <laughs> Reason you're saying is because of the yapping? Okay, good. I, I always just want to double check. <laughs> I mean, I figure. I don't know. I guess my streams... If people didn't like yapping, my streams would have no viewers, because most streams are just me ranting about something or other. Yeah, you're good, Milo. Um, Antifa, if you wanted to rejoin, you should be able to know. If you are able to, I don't know. I guess they might have gone banned or something. Do 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 do. Um, speaking of yapping, um, <laughs> I want to make. I want to make more scripted videos in general. Um. I, I'm debating whether or not I want to make a Splatoon 1 video out of the stream. I might just leave it as the stream. Like, I kind of want to make, like, a, a tribute type video, but, like, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of just, it, it was in the moment. It was, you know, we were playing hours after <laughs> the thing shut down. Like, I, I don't know how to highlight that. I feel like it kind of just is what it is. So I might just leave that as it is. Um... But I would like to... 
I want to make like more lore videos because <laughs> I'm obviously a lore guy and I don't have a lot of lore content besides obviously like the big video essay. Um, and I would like to do more, not not necessarily things like that intense, <laughs> um, but I I have a lot of the script done for a video just talking about sanitization because um, I just you know we don't have a ton of people in the community just like documenting lore. Um, we have like. You know, I think I brought this up before, but you know, yeah, there's there's only a handful of people. There's like Rasicus. I mean, Ardenin made like a theory video and some stuff on like the Alterna, like the human voice lines and stuff. But um, and like Je Jexist, I think was their name, did the big timeline video. So like, there's this, there's some stuff out there, but um, I think just covering like smaller topics, kind of like what Rasicus does. Um, I don't know. There's, there's not a, a. We got a bunch of sanitization lore <laughs> inside order, basically, and sanitization lore is something that is very hard to, you know, it's spread across dev interviews and a bunch of external sources from the game, and now even in the game, it's, it's in two different games. So, I thought it would be a good thing to make a video on. Um, so I'd like, I'd like to do that. I think that would be cool. And then if there's other topics like that. I don't know. I think that would be a fun, a fun avenue for the channel to go. Not that I would stop. Like I don't want to stop doing gameplay stuff, but um, I think it would be cool to do some more things. Oh god. Yeah, like I figured it's something people are interested in. The only thing, um, I made I made a, a Twitter thread about this, but there's like, I don't know. The only thing about it is like I'd be really afraid to spread misinformation <laughs> because there are some things with Splatoon lore that like get misinterpreted or like mistranslated, and then everyone believes them, and it's very hard to like undo the damage. <laughs> uh, so I'd be very afraid of getting something wrong. So I was just trying to make sure, like. Because there's like a contradiction with one part of sanitization with like the the Octo Expansion art book and then like Marina's dialogue in Side Order, so I would have to figure out how I would explain that, but that's that's kind of the main roadblock left. Do 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 <clears throat> Yeah, I'm not I'm not great with this weapon. Um <laughs> but it's kind of fun. So we're going to we're going to roll with it. Yeah, no, my, um, I mean, I, I had 4,000 something subscribers before the video essay, and now I hit 9,000, which I think a lot of them, well, actually, I could actually check. I, I won't check right now, but, um, a lot of them are definitely from the video. I assume some of them are from the side order playthrough as well, because that a decent amount of views. Um, I mean, good, good for me. I'm not complaining. Um, <laughs> got a good amount of views, so I'm possibly some people sub from that. Well, I don't want to dwell on the kits thing for too much longer, but good and fun are both subjective things, because good and high level and good and low level, um, like there isn't just one meta to the game. You know, a very low level player will think that Clash Blaster is hard to deal with, <laughs> you know? Or like, you know, like if you hear complaints from like lower level players, like... Uh, I think it's... It's actually very difficult to make a universally good weapon, and obviously the same thing goes for fun. Um, there are weapons casual players will like and comp players won't, and vice versa, so... I don't think it is that simple. 
Um, and I also just think most of the weapons are pretty fun. <laughs> I I don't know. I think I think there is there is an intended play style for pretty much every weapon in the game, and even if they seem unconventional, I think it's possible to kind of figure it out if you mess around with it. Obviously, if you're playing in like a um, coordinated environment, you're going to have a worse time with some weapons because they're going to get outclassed, but most people are not playing in a coordinated environment. Well, no, the Oct thing... I don't think Oct has any inconsistency. Or, or oh, uh, what you might be referring to. Um, to the best of my knowledge, which I, I have <laughs> looked this up for the video, um, a bunch of people think that Oct was partially sanitized, but the actual thing is that they were partially willing to be sanitized. Um, but the, the correction to that mistranslation did not spread nearly as much as the original translation, so <laughs> it's it's a big misconception. But that's not... That was a translation thing from a fan that was not, like, a a dev contradiction. The, the dev contradiction thing is, um, with how sanitization occurs. Um, because Haikara Walker says that... Basically, Marina talks about how it happens in, like, multiple steps. And the first step of sanitization is having your memory removed and turned into mem cakes, um, which she implies is what happened to eight in Octo Expansion, um, which is really interesting. But before that, in the High Kara Walker art book, we were told that sanitization just happened instantly. Like they were just covered in sanitized ink, they instantly removed, uh, lost all their memory, and they were instantly brainwashed um, by Commander Tartar. So. It doesn't, you know, I, I what I said in the Twitter thread is that Marina's explanation makes more sense because it explains why eight has mem cakes in the Metro. It might even explain the like character creation screen where we just see eight like floating in a weird green liquid. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm willing to go towards uh, and go in that direction. But it is strange that um, they kind of describe it differently. Um, Oct just says that they were forced to DJ for Tardar, which, like, <sighs> to me that screams, like, weird Nintendo of America localization, <laughs> but it doesn't, I don't see that as a contradiction. Like, I think it's likely that Tardar, you know, I don't think Oct probably fully understood what sanitization was, or maybe, because, because it... I think the the reason we were told Oct was willing to be sanitized was to, like, you know, let go of their in inhibitions and, you know, concentrate on their on their music. Um, but Commander Tartar forced them to make music that wasn't their own. So I think they were probably under the impression they would be able to be, like, you know, just do their own work without having, like, an ego. <laughs> um, but, but in reality, they were, like, fully mind-controlled. That's my understanding. It, it is kind of hazy. I, I wish I could, like... <laughs> it'd be nice to work with someone who knows Japanese. Um, so maybe I will attempt to do that, but <laughs> I'm not totally sure. I was just trying to ink really fast. Do, 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 do. Died a curling bomb. Cool. Oh my god. I... I really wish I did not die here. Okay, okay. I was gonna say, we... Should totally be able to get that, but I was scared for a second. I mean, Reef Slider is just its own problem, I think. <laughs> 
Special design is something I, I will definitely be harsher on Nintendo for because Trisuka has been overtuned for a long time. Cooler has been pretty overtuned for a long time. Um, Brief Slider has been terrible forever. <laughs> like, I, I'm not defending that. I feel like they could definitely be a bit more extreme. Or just, I mean, not even extreme with the nerf, the buffs and nerfs to do anything to address things that are clearly very dominant. Um, I'm going to try this. I don't know why, I just feel like it. I mean, I'll say I think Hammer is a little bit trickier of a situation. Because a, a lot of people want it to be entirely invincible from the front. And I've said this before, but I, I think that would be really janky. Like, I, I, there's not, like, an obvious... Like, it's already a little weird with Inkvac. Like, the Inkvac hitbox of, like, getting behind them and shooting them feels kind of weird. Um, I don't, you know, trying to hit a hitbox like that while there is a giant, you know, death hitbox headed your way. <laughs> I, I don't think that would be super fun to play against. It would make the special stronger. It would make people run away from it more. So, I mean, maybe maybe that's a good thing. But I, I think it would make the counterplay feel worse. And I don't know if that would be worth it to make the special stronger, but maybe it would. Do, 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 do. Well, yeah, I mean, they, they kind of fix that a little bit. <laughs> it's still not perfect. I don't know. I, I don't use hammer very often, so I don't experience that as much as you might, but that was a good example of Reslider being terrible. Um, <laughs> I also, I mean, I, I made a whole video about this when Splashdown was announced, but I, I think the game has too many specials, but it, again, that's like, <laughs> you know, it's kind of a thing where it's like, uh, well, it's awkward, because now they're in the game. Um, but I, I wish they added less specials to Splatoon 3, because I think a lot of them just fulfill the exact same role and are just worse versions of other specials that are also in the game, <laughs> which is kind of unfortunate. I, I don't know. It's just sort of weird. That was not good. I don't know why I jumped in as a spelling. I don't know what I thought would happen, so fair enough. Yeah, I mean, Triple Splashdown is weird because it's like, I don't even hate Triple Splashdown. I mean, I don't, I don't really like it being in the game. <laughs> like, I, I think it's a, it's cooler as a concept than Reef Slider, and I think it's often more satisfying to execute, but they really just do the exact same thing. And it's like, uh, Reef Slider is just worse. Like, I, I <laughs> so why was it in the game? But it was in the game from the beginning. So it's like, at that point, I feel like you just, you know, just buff Reef Slider. I mean, it's definitely not broken. It's terrible. I mean, it, it's not as bad as it was in Splatoon 2. Splashdown is not a very strong special. Or unless you mean... No, you're talking about, yeah, you're talking about that. <laughs> so that's the thing, Splashdown was horrible in Splatoon 2, and they... I don't really like the way they buffed it, either, like... I don't know. The kills don't feel earned. Like, now, you used to just die when you use it, now you trade when you use it. Like, that doesn't feel better. <laughs> I don't know, it's still, it's still not, like... I just don't really like it. Triple Reef Slider. I, there's just so many things they could do to Reef Slider to make it more interesting. Like, I... I don't know. I get the desire to have specials that are easy to execute. Like, not every special needs as much depth as, like, Crab. 
or inkjet or, or you know whatever but i i feel like you could add something to reef slider other than just you know press the button and you can stop it early like let us steer a bit let us jump off the reef slider let it like just just any little extra element of depth could you know if they're not going to just balance it <laughs> they could just you know take away its end lag considering splashdown a special that has an extremely similar role <laughs> and does the same thing just doesn't have end lag i don't know why reef slider needs to have end lag but as long as they want it to have end lag maybe give it literally anything else to do so it's not just a button that kills you i don't, I don't know <laughs> that'd be nice I was trying to jump out, I don't even know why. Because <laughs> they're so frequent? I mean, Splatfests are less frequent than they were in the past two games, so I guess I don't particularly feel that way. I don't know, I'm pretty neutral on Splatfest. I don't really like Turf War, but I think events in the game are fun, so... It's fine. <laughs> It'd be more fun if it had ranked modes, but... I can still have some fun with them. Um, we can maybe get this in overtime. I was very confused for a second. I don't know why that Kraken didn't kill. Was that like hitting the bubble but not the guy? But I was inside the bubble, so it should have I don't know why I don't know why that, that didn't kill. <laughs> I don't like this map. I don't like this map at all. I <laughs> this map sucks so much, especially on zones. I mean, if you're actually doing a lot with Zipcaster, it's pretty high execution. Um, I don't know what I want to play right now. Let's try. You know, we're tr we're talking about Splashdown. Why not? I like this weapon. It's the only thing I really like with Splashdown. I really wanted to like end parries, but they just. They just kind of suck. I, I don't know. I really wanted M parries to be good, but I I do not like Splashdown on it at all. Do, 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 do. Um. I don't know if you're talking to me or someone else, Milo. I I'll hop in VC. I want to I want to draw something. Um. I, I have a half-finished Cali drawing that I might as well finish for Cali Day. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if I would play Splatoon later, but we'll see. Happy Cali Day. <laughs> um, I want to do a side order review. I want to do... I mean, okay. I want to do a sanitization lore video, which will include a bunch of side order lore. So that will probably happen first. Um, I want to do a side order review, but not a review in the sense of like a, you know, before you buy type of review, because obviously <laughs> that ship has kind of sailed anyway. Um, I just want to do a big video where I talk about my own thoughts on it. Um, so I don't know how long that will take to come out. Um, I've not like, I actually, no, I've started, I, I did start on the script for it a while ago, but um, I kind of want to let my thoughts settle. <laughs> I don't want it to be a first impressions thing. I want it to be like a, a well thought out, like, this is how good I think Side Order was. So that, that might still be a bit. But yes, I, I would like to make that sanitization lore video. Um, might be the next video I make, honestly, because I, I, I'm pretty far along with it. And if I kind of figure out the parts I'm unsure about, um, it will be it'll be pretty much good to go once I I mean, I have to edit it, but <laughs> uh, shouldn't be too hard. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, 
Boosh. Mm, boosh. I missed, actually. Wow. I don't know how I... I guess I hit the ground? That was weird. I really thought that would kill. Um... <laughs> Nice. Any any short game on Undertow is a good game because it means we can stop playing on Undertow. Bada 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 bum bum bum. Anta transported their stamperness to you. All right. <laughs> do 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 do. I'm gonna take my stamperness back. Thank you very much. Undertow gets a lot of hate, but if we band together, we can give it more. Undertow really hurts me, because literally they ch they just need to break the walls. There's just the glass walls on the left and right. Just sh just break the glass. Just break the glass, and then there's a route around, and so you don't have to go through that tiny little part in the middle that sucks for every weapon in the game. Just just let us go around that, <laughs> and then it will be fun. That's all they have to do. Didn't they even do that? They, they put gushers on it in the gusher thing, right? And it was just better? I, I never played the gusher challenge, but I forget if people were saying they should do that or if that actually happened in the challenge. I'll oh, see you, Dan. Thanks for chilling. The walls don't need to be inkable. If we break the glass, you can just drop. I don't I don't care if the walls aren't inkable. What are they? Okay, what is that comp? I think we ran into the... well, I'm not gonna make fun of it, because <laughs> we might lose. You never know. You make fun of people on the results screen, not on the, the opening screen. Um, maybe I should bring up that thing I was talking about with the the sanitization. Contradiction thing, just to get more thoughts. I don't know. Oh god. <laughs> Not expect to get two there. Really? I was too late. Oh my god. I'm I'm actually really bad at timing blaster shots like that. Which should be very easy. Do 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 Oh my god, okay, good. 
Oh, whoa, there, sir. Sir, okay. I I still jump. I still jump way too much um, with blasters. You need to just swim and shoot. Keep your feet on the ground so I can actually shoot straight. Do 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 do. Uh, maybe that was a bad idea. Nope. We're fine. We're fine. Okay. Hot take arrow is good. Um, I mean, depends what you're arguing it's good for. <laughs> it's probably good in turf war. I don't think it is going to fare very well in the other modes. Past a certain rank anyway. Are a very silly octopus. Why, why are you bagging? I was missing whatever was going on in that game, apparently. Oh, okay, well. I do have point sensor. I, I always get like high kill numbers with this weapon, then I remember that a lot of those are probably assists, but still not bad. Do, do, do. Oh, I did not look out there, KD. I assume it was not good. <laughs> did we have two stampers last time, or did you guys just do that now? I'm sorry, I've, I literally have been, like, tuned out of the actual games as we've just been talking about stuff. <laughs> Got good music, at least. Oh, they have, like, an actual comp. Okay, well... Uh... Okay. Okay, just completely missed. That's cool. Benadryl. I mean, I don't want to come down too hard if you, if you like the weapon, but it's pretty objectively bad at killing. <laughs> like, it, it has a very slow kill time. Um, and you has very short range. Like, it is, it is pretty statistically worse at killing than most weapons in the game, but, you know, you can get away with a lot of stuff just playing casual, you know, in solo queue and even in ranked, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you can make it work, but arguing it's good is probably not gonna <laughs> be met with very warm reception from a lot of people. I'll see you, Milo. Thanks for chilling. Um, I'm not sure if you mean like the player base or like in lore, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure, I mean, I still see a pretty even number of Inklings and Octolings.
It's probably about 50-50, honestly. Because I feel like some veteran players will like want to be an inkling because they were there from the start, but then some veteran players will also be like, oh, but it's really cool that we unlocked ink or octolings and now I like being an octoling and then new players are probably just going to, you know, it's probably about 50-50 because they just pick whatever they want, so. I mean, I, I don't notice the trend anyway. Oh, see ya, um, Eden, Eden, I'm not sure how to say that, but thanks for hanging out. Hope you have a good day. Oh, come on, one point. There we go, there we go. Okay, nice. <laughs> cool. Oh, I dropped some frames. That's weird. Excuse me. <coughs> Jeez. You're gonna unleash your inner Brit? I assume that's referring to the gear you're using or something? I don't, I don't know if there's a British weapon. <clears throat> okay, Antiflosia. Um, yeah, how would I... I guess I could stream my desktop for a second. I kind of want to show. I don't know if I'll do this right now, but um, <laughs> I'm curious to get people's thoughts on the on the lore thing. And we got some lore enjoyers here, maybe. So we'll see. Look at your gear. Oh yes, I, the, the the hat, of course. Okay. <laughs> Um, here it is. Um, maybe I'll I'll wait for the next the next uh game to show it off because yeah, we're we're right in right now. But um <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how many people here I don't know if we got like the lore heads in today, but I just want more opinions on the thing because I don't want to. It's it's just the inconsistency with the Octo expansion thing. Um, like if Marina's dev diaries are, I think Marina's dev diaries are what we should rely on. But I don't know. There were some different interpretations on Twitter of the High Kara Walker thing, so I'd be interested to see. But we can worry about that next time. Um, let's just kill these people. There we go. I, that was, I don't know. I was being too aggressive, and then I I just tried to leave. I just got respawn punished by a wave breaker. Okay, well, okay. I feel like you should have to kill people with the main weapon to activate respawn punisher. I feel like that would be a fair <laughs> limitation, personally. Definitely not just, like, my in-the-moment salty thought. That was uber dead. Hello, Morgan. Welcome. Oh. Gotta stop jumping, I gotta stop jumping! With Blaster, why do I always jump? Where are you going? 
There we go. Um, oh boy. Oh man. Okay. This map is just not. <laughs> oh, thank god. Okay, rotation's about to end. I am so ready to not play on this map ever. Um. Oh my god. Please get this person away from our base. Never mind, I'm dead. Do 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 do. What are they doing there? Okay, good. Cool. Um, please win that fight. Uh, trade that works. Okay. I'm I'm concentrating a little harder than usual because I it would be nice to win this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this map, but I want to I want to leave faster. That was very lucky. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by how long do I think it will last. Like, I think. Uh, first of all, I think we're getting a content extension. I don't think it's really going to end right at the two year mark. Um, well. I don't know. <laughs> I guess it might, but hmm, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know how they're going to do the weapons, because um, I'm very confident we're going to get more weapons than just second kits for everything in the game, because that's how the past games worked. But I, I don't know how last. I don't know how long the updates will last. I mean, I'm definitely going to keep playing the game. Um, <laughs> if, I've, if I've stuck with the games for this long. Um, I'm not just going to stop, but it'll be interesting to see how it works with the next Nintendo console, because that's supposedly coming out next year. I, I don't know. They they said they've been saying it's going to come out next year for like three years, but assuming that does ever come out, um, that would probably affect the life cycle of this game in some way, one way or another, but I don't know. Oh, see you, Fanta. Thanks for playing. Um, isn't the curling bomb thing on now, or did someone say it was? Yeah. We could do this now. <laughs> That's a thing. Um, shoot. What do, what do, what do weapons exist with the curling bomb? Um... Let's do roller with like probably just like my normal build. I guess I can create a room. I assume some of you guys might want to try the weird curling bomb thing. <laughs> we still we still have the pool open, so I will open this up for anyone who wants to hop in. I tried, like I said, like one game of this yesterday, um, and it was funny, but also stupid.
Um, I'm not sure what sub power up does, but I feel like it probably wouldn't affect it in this challenge anyway. Because normally when they like boost things, they make abilities just like not really do anything. Um, like the, the run speed one, like additional run speed didn't do anything. But I, th I mean, normally sub power up is range, so I guess it probably like goes further before it explodes. Oh, it just goes faster, okay. Okay. So, this will probably be kind of dumb, but also funny. I played it on Hammerhead. Okay, yeah. So if you haven't seen this yet, um... <laughs> oh god, okay. They're all order roller. Um, but yeah, it's very stupid, because they look like this. <laughs> um, and I think the contact damage one-shots people. Oh my god. <laughs> it just, it like looks like fake. Like it looks, <laughs> I don't know, it, it's weird. Man. Yeah, Mario Maker was a weird situation. It really feel like, it, it felt like that game was supposed to get more than it ended up getting. I feel like even just the changes from launch were kind of lackluster, like... I don't know. They added a few really interesting, like, things to make levels with, but the most of the, like, game was still very similar to one. seen that guy and I feel like I'm flicking fast enough but I'm not. Oh uh, boy. It's probably not actually worth charging them. Really? Well, we are we're not getting that one. Ooh. I'm sorry, I'm more tired than I realized. <laughs> I'll probably and I mean as 30 minutes from now would be the three hour mark. I'll probably end around then, if not a bit earlier. But this is funny. I don't want to. <laughs> not not, not going to be done just yet. I don't know if roller is the best weapon for this. I guess we just lost a bunch of rollers, but I, I don't know how much I like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think they're updating side order. I really don't see that ever happening. I 
I don't know. I, I think side order. Side order was good. <laughs> it, it feels a, I, like. I don't know. I don't even know if it really feels like there should have been more content. It just feels like it has less content than Octo Expansion, which is strange because it took so much longer to make. So that's why I've been a bit. I, I, that's what I've said about it. So then like. That's what I keep saying about it. Because <laughs> that's just. It, it's strange to me. I don't think I, I don't know if it's a bad thing. I'm trying to decide if it's a bad thing or not, <laughs> but it's. I think it was worth the wait, but I think it is it was kind of surprising how quick it was to just finish everything considering the wait. I don't, I don't really know how much I would like in infinite mode, honestly. Because like I like having a. Uh, Oh my god. Oh, okay, wait, this is kind of <laughs> this is kind of goofy on on Wahoo World. But yeah, I mean, I like having like an end goal. Like I like I I I'd, I'd be kind of bored of an endless mode, I think personally. Amber is actually kind of good for this cuz you just destroy the crawling bombs. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I do plan to make a video about this. And I, I've talked about it before, so I don't want to repeat myself too much, but... Um, I thought the lore of Side Order was very good. Uh, the actual plot was kind of underwhelming. But it wasn't, it wasn't as disappointing to me. It was just, it was just underwhelming, I guess. I think they could have done a lot more with the villain. Um, oh my god. I feel like if there were amiibos, I, I don't know. I feel like they would have announced those already, but there's a chance they announced them at, um, the, the Splatoon 3 World Championships are, I don't, I don't know if tonight is the best way to say it. They're actually in 12 hours from now is when finals are supposed to happen. Um, so. Most people here will probably not be awake, but uh, a lot of people are hoping they announce something there. And Amiibos, I think, is a pretty likely thing. I if Side Order Amiibos exist, that's probably where they would be announced. So, we'll probably know 12 hours from now. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the story of Octo Expansion, I think, is definitely miles better than Side Order. But Side Order is just less ambitious. Like, that's why it's not as disappointing to me. It's like... I, the, the thing I keep saying is Alterna was very ambitious, but I think kind of failed at what it tried to do, whereas Side Order just didn't try to do that much. <laughs> so... I, I wasn't... I was more disappointed in Return of the Mammalians than Side Order, because Side Order just felt like it was trying to have a smaller scope story to begin with. I mean, Octo Expansion I, I was just, in many ways, was really just like a lightning in a bottle thing. I don't know if we're ever going to get something as good as Octo Expansion again. <laughs> like, I... I don't know. I thought that curling bomb might hit him as he felt unlucky. Oh. Uh oh. I feel like it's weirdly difficult to actually hit people with the curling bombs. <laughs> I mean, maybe they're just move kind of slow. Maybe the hitbox isn't actually as big as it looks. 
I feel like this challenge is about running over people with the coin bomb. I feel like it's very difficult to actually pull that off. Like, when they did the angle shooter challenge... Okay, there we go. <laughs> when they did the angle shooter challenge, you could just annihilate people from across the map with them. Like, they, they did not mess around that time. I feel like this is not as... Not quite as overtuned. Do do do. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it was it was very fan servicey, which is fine. It was just the ending that bothered me. I just, I, I again, I'm gonna, I have a specific, I have very specific complaints that I will talk about someday in a video, so I'll, I'll save it for then. Oh, I got two stars in that. Do do do. Um, I know there there was like the Dana miners apparently said there were there was data for side order amiibos, but that was like a while ago, so I don't know. I don't know. Just with Octo expansion, they announced the amiibos. Uh, the same in the exact same thing where they announced the release date for Octo expansion. So it seems weird that the side order ones would be so delayed, but I guess I guess that's not normally how amiibos work. I think Octo expansion was kind of the exception where they they made the amiibos ahead of time. But surely if they if they knew the Octo expansion amiibos would sell, I don't know why they think the side order ones wouldn't. But I don't know. It would be nice just to get more cool gear or something. It's kind of weird that we got less gear from Side Order than Octo Expansion 2. Oh, okay. Speaking of Octo Expansion, hello Parallel Cannon. <laughs> yeah, um... I, d I don't know. It's difficult to say for sure, but it, it does seem like, you know, the original side order advertising seemed to convey a bit of a different vibe than what we got. I mean, it's, it's really just the ending where there was kind of that weird tonal shift. I think the campaign in general wasn't, like, too far off from that. I guess I just, I mean, I knew from the start, you know, it's a, I mean, I made that a video talking about it, <laughs> so I, I, I definitely was hoping it would be more like that, but I, you know, I was sure to say even then, like, you know, this is concept art, the concept art for the other campaigns looks very, very different from what the actual game is, so I kind of had my expectations in check as far as that, I think. Um... It's again, though, why I say that Octo Expansion is just like this lightning in a bottle thing, because that's like one of the only games, like pretty much any game you can think of that has like concept art or an art book out there. People will be like, oh, like, why, why didn't we get this? Like, this looks so cool. This is so much cooler than what ended up being the final game. Like, oh, we were we were robbed. We didn't get these things. And it's like, you know, first of all, <laughs> concept art is concept art. It's it's iteration. It is not. um Concept art does not mean this was a thing that was going to be in the game and then they took it out. It's just a process of trying to figure out what they want to put in the game. Um, that said, Octo Expansion looks a lot like its concept art, like more than any other game I know. Like, <laughs> you know, Mario Odyssey, there's like, you know, these super cool looks for the kingdom. It's like, oh, I, I wish I got put in the game. Like, it just so, so many games, you there's always stuff you wish was there that didn't make it into the final cut. Now, Octo Expansion, like, you looked at an art book and it's like, they just they just realized their vision. <laughs> they just literally, like, they had an idea and they and they did it and it worked. <laughs> so it's like, I, I really do think that's just a rare... 
occurrence. I, I I don't think it's I don't think people get the opportunity to make something like Octo Expansion very often. I, I think it just had a very strong creative direction. Um and they went with it and it and it worked, so. I don't know. It's a very it's a very hard act to follow. It's a high bar. I'll probably go until we get the um the token from playing five games. Or is it winning five games? I don't know exactly how it works. The, the challenge thing. And then we can cash in all our conch shells. Probably end it there. Do 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 do. I kind of wish they like painted more too. I don't, maybe that would be too extreme for splat zones because I think they paint the normal amount. I don't know. It's it's a goofy challenge, but it could have been goofier. Oh my god! Of course, I say that, then instantly get one shot by one. Oh, uh, that was a lot of things happening on the zone at once. Hammer killed a splashdown, then a crab and a screen. What did I die to? Oh, okay. Guess a bomb explosion. Got him. Oh my god. Oh, oh, okay. I did not think that was going to bounce towards me. Ah, oh, shoot. Oh my god. There we go, there we go. Hopefully you can get it back. Yeah, this is... Oh god, maybe not my, my favorite of the challenges. Oh, definitely not. I think the tower one is still my favorite. Because I actually felt the most like different, but this is a this is a good one. Yeah, I mean, it has a bit of story inside order. It's definitely way less than Octo Expansion, but I don't really know how you develop a character like Eight like beyond their story in Octo Expansion. To be fair, like I don't know. I'm just glad they didn't mess up Eight. <laughs> It's definitely not as impactful, though, like... I don't know. I mean, my, my thing with Side Order is, like, it's a it's a, basically a game about Marina. Like, more than anyone else, it's like, Marina made the world. <laughs> he is the reason for the conflict of the story. Um... You know, she's the one who it gives you all the exposition. The, and, like, all of the lore is from her perspective. And I feel like her entire character arc happened off screen. <laughs> like, I, I really wish we got to kind of see her coming to terms with, like, you know, the idea of order being, you know, a balance of chaos and order is being good or whatever. But just like, she basically decides that before the game starts. And, uh, I don't know. That's kind of what I felt like was missing. Like, there's an interesting kind of philosophical, you know, debate to be had there, which they they slightly touch on at the very start of the order fight with Marina, you know, giving her little speech, but <laughs> it's just that development just happens off screen. Like that it just happened without us really seeing it. So 
I don't really like that. I don't like how they handled that. Um, and I, I, the way order went down was just kind of weird. It was just kind of lame. It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't lame. But it was fun, but it wasn't, I don't know. They, they undercut the, the dark tone completely. And I think it was a little, I don't think it was earned. <laughs> I think it, it felt a little cheesy. Yeah, I mean, I like I like Marina a lot as a character. That's why I, you know, I just wanted to see more of her. I think what's there is good. I just, I, I don't know. I just don't like uh, how quickly order was reduced to just a complete non-threat, instantly. Like. Uh, <laughs> The, the big issue with me is, um, you know, the entire, you know, the, the whole stakes of the campaign are like, oh, everyone's going to get grayscaled. Like, Order is going to force them to lose their will and, you know, make them all like slaves to its world of order. But then when we actually get grayscaled at the end of the game, everyone just breaks out of it instantly. Like, <laughs> and it would have been cool if just eight did that because it's like, you know, I don't know, Eight's soul is etched with the calamari incantation or whatever. Like, like there could have been some cool, the moment where we do like the rhythm game thing. Like, that's really cool, except then Pearl and Marina and Oct also just automatically break out of grayscaling. So if it's like, if everyone, if everyone can just break out of grayscaling, if they listen to music, like, why was it a threat in the first place? Like, that just undoes all of the weight of the plot up to that point. Because it's like, well, okay, so Order actually couldn't do anything. Because Marina just had to start playing music. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. It, it's, I get that it's like a fun Splatoon music moment, but like, it, it kind of completely undercuts literally the entire point of the story. So, <laughs> I did not like that. But yeah, again, like, it doesn't actively worsen the lore in the way I feel Grizz does, <laughs> which I, I will always be the Grizz hater, but I, I'm just saying it's, it, it didn't disappoint me as hard. I just thought there could have been a lot more to it, but it was, it was fine. Okay, um, I think this might be the last one. If we if we win, we'll get the last thing. I'm not 100% on that, but pretty sure. I definitely like this map better. For this challenge, at least. Oh my god. Oh my god. Um, okay, well they came back swinging. And I ran into a bomb.
There we go. Oh. Keep forgetting I can use my main weapon, too. <laughs> there we go. Oh my god, really? Surprised that got out. I feel like I, I killed them before they used that. <laughs> Probably some latency. Oh, man. I mean, I, I don't mind Grizz being a bear. I just mind him being a bear with intelligence. <laughs> a bear that can speak and think and conduct science without that really being explained in enough detail. Which I, uh, you know, I've talked about it a million times before, so I, I won't go into it again, but yeah. Ran straight into that. <laughs> Um... Oh! Oh, I was trying to get the cancel. Not quite. Get the zone, get the zone, please. Um, shoot. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. There we go. Yes, I just saw this post. I like a man, but for once I'm going chicks. Okay, that's a that's a good slap fest post. <laughs> Very distracted by that for a second. Oh my god. Um... Okay, oh shoot, they just capped. Yeah, probably not happening then. Oh, unless, 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 unless. Unless, 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 unless. Nope. Nope, 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 never mind. <laughs> hmm. I'm I'm Team Bear, Bear Cubs. I believe that will be it. Or I, I will we'll do some some gotcha machine, but or does it only give us the thing if we win? Actually, hold on, hold on. Oh, it doesn't give us the same if we don't win. Do okay, wait, I'll do another one. Dude, I think are we one or two away? Can you like can you check or do you just have to like? Okay, we'll we'll keep going for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I part I I partly chose it because it's funny because I am I am the guy who hates Grizz. I'm on Team Bear. Um... Do, 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 two, wait, okay. I'm getting- I'm just pretty tired today. I don't- <laughs> I don't know. I didn't- I didn't feel as tired when I started streaming, but... Um, yeah, it's been, I mean, I streamed seven hours on, <laughs> on Monday, so you can probably forgive me for not having as much to say today. 
I am hoping for something, some kind of announcement at Worlds, though. Honestly, I'd be happy with Amiibo. <laughs> I know if there aren't third kits, all hell is gonna break loose on Twitter, but, um... I, I just want something. <laughs> I just hope there's something there. There we go. Let's get it. What characters? Um, I could see there being like a pearl drone and opt maybe, because just I know we already have. They don't normally make new versions of characters that already have them. Um, at least for Splatoon. So, like, we probably get, wouldn't get new off-the-hook ones, but I could see them doing a Pearl Drone and a... I mean, Pearl, technically, you know, the same character, but... <laughs> Pearl Drone and Oct, maybe? I don't know. I would like that, personally. Uh, I think Agent 8 is unlikely, just because, like I said, they don't they don't normally do updated versions of characters. They just have, you know, one amiibo per character in this in the series, so I would not expect a new 8-1. Oct would be really cool, though. Um... I don't know about Overlorder. That'd be kind of cool as an amiibo, but I... I don't know. I think, I mean, at least the data mine said there were only two amiibos, so... That's why I only guessed two, but I don't know how accurate that actually is. I feel like it would be smallest, not Overlorder. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I feel like... That would just, I would just expect that more, but I'm not sure. Be nice if we could win this one, so kind of focusing. I'm also just tired, that's why I'm not talking as much, but <laughs> oh my god, please, please, please. Shoot. Yeah, I mean, if they haven't even made new amiibo for Callie and Marie since their Splatoon 1 version, so I, I just don't think a new. Off the hook one is likely. There we go. I don't know what the outfits would be either, like, cause like we already have, um, we already have eight's outfit. I guess getting dead fish is, you know, may maybe it'd probably be something inspired by Ox outfit instead of literally being what they're wearing, cause. 
I don't know how well the <laughs> a dress would work on Splatoon character models. Um, I mean, the Squid Girl dress exists, but Ox is more like tight fitting. I don't know. I feel like that'd be harder to implement, but we'll see. Um, I don't know what Pearl would give you, though. Oh my god. I'm really hoping we can hold zone here. Oh, there's someone on right still. Oh no. Um... I don't know if I want to jump into that. Oh, please hold the zone. Please hold the zone. Oh, we are not holding the zone. There we go. There we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, they're super jumping. That is not good. Jeez. So many splashdowns. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, well, it would be weird to only get Pearl's outfit and not Marina's, though, I feel like. I don't know. Dude. Okay, um, you know, we just hit the three-hour mark. I know I said I was gonna do it till we got the shell-out token, but I think I'm gonna... gonna call it there for games. It has been it has been a nice stream, but I am I'm tired, <laughs> and I would like to work on my Cali Day drawing. Um, but I have I have some conch shells to spend, so we can end off the stream with that maybe. Thank you everybody for the games today, and for hanging out. Oh my goodness, yeah, that <laughs> cannot be saved. All right. Um, yeah, Lego fan, I am about to end it. Thank you for, for stopping by, though, uh, briefly as it may be. Um... Cool. And how many... I don't even know how many things we got. In, okay, we got one of these, <laughs> so we have five rolls, and it's blue, okay. <laughs> and purple? Okay, chunks. Titles are kind of the main thing I want, because I feel like they're just the most interesting at this point. <laughs> Determined costumeer? Is that someone, okay, is that someone who makes con costumes? I, I don't think I've heard that word before. <laughs> uh, blue. Purple. Okay, maybe, but maybe we also spend some money. Because cause I want more things. Okay, and then how about we also spend even more money? And it's blue. <laughs> okay, well, that was that. Um, <laughs> not, not exactly the most exciting of rolls. Yeah, it has been a chill stream today. Thank you guys for hanging out. Hope your Saturdays go well. I will see you next weekend for Splatfest, most likely. Um, I am Team Bear Cub, as you can see. Um, but yeah, I will call it there. I might post. I'm gonna post that lore thing I was talking about in the Splatoon chat. If there's any lore people who are interested in in talking about that, I'm I'm curious to hear people's thoughts. But yes, um, that'll be for the stream. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Cosmic.